We're in the desert for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour, 300 kilometers today. We wrap up the 1996 season for the Featherlight Southwest Tour cars. And a difficult weather day here. It's very windy, very dusty as well. And these Southwest Tour drivers, 42 of them, are about to take the green flag here. Championship is on the line here at Phoenix International Raceway this afternoon. Let's show you how the point standings stack up coming into this final race of the 1996 campaign. Chris Robinson with a 158-point lead in the series. All he needs to do is take the green flag this afternoon. Ryan Germoni and Chris Trickledoff competing for the third spot in points as well. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Welcome to Phoenix International Raceway. With me is International Hall of Famer Buddy Baker. The Southwest Tour Cars racing one of their longest races for the most money this year with the championship on the line. You know the one thing I'm looking at? 2,800-pound cars going around this racetrack. It's the biggest track they run on all year long. 40-mile-an-hour gusts out here. Those cars are going to be moving around. These guys are going to have to be extremely careful today. They'll have their hands full. These cars qualify at speeds quicker than the Winston Cup cars, 27 and a half seconds around here. Well, they're quick, and they're very adjustable. But the one thing you can't factor in, they don't run this type of racetrack very often, just twice a year. Well, the Phoenix Oval, of course, a distorted oval, very difficult to drive on, very racy raceway, and these drivers are here for the second time this year. We'll find out how this 300-kilometer event will go when we put them under green in just a moment here on TNN Motorsports. Was that okay? I thought that pretty much touched all the bases. I won't do any better. <laughs> <laughs> 40 miles an hour, I say. Drain us. We've got our we've got our men over. You're the not corner, messing right? with this right now, are you? Well, I've got I've got trouble with the uh, yeah. mic yeah. that I'm using now. Yeah, right there. We see them there right. I by. don't know what to do about it either. They're hard by the Fan Grabber Souvenirs Building. <coughs> Wonder what that means. Check, 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 check. One, two, one. Okay, I'm back. I hope this is going to work. All right. <coughs> On the pole. Gonna take that Michael Allstop. Just hold that on. Just Gary on. Smith. Just, just, just put it right Mark there. Reed. Brian yeah. Gamone. Gee, 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 gee. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, what was that? A clearing. Blech. <coughs> Blech. Mm. Wow. Why is that? Number one. Uh, Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, man. So they fire the engines, right? All, All right. right, I'm open. Hey, Glenn. What is this? Hey, guys. We hear you fine up here. I don't think they hear us. Glenn. Glenn, Randy. Hear you. Yeah, you hear the boots? You. Okay, great. Yeah. How much early is the, are they starting these things? That's it. That's it. Mm hmm. Oh. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway. Ready to go racing for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. Starting lineup today, 42 cars will take the green. Michael Alsop will have the pole. Alongside him, Gary Smith from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Second row today includes Mark Reed. He is from California. And Brian Germoni, veteran of this series in car number five. Third row today, Chris Trickle from Las Vegas, the nephew of Dick Trickle. And Craig Rodman, one of the two drivers in contention for the point title coming in here this weekend. Fourth row, Doug McCowan in his Pontiac, the 34. And Chris Rodman, all he needs to do is take the green this afternoon, and he will lock up the Southwest Tour Championship for 1996. Your fifth row, Tony Toast from Pismo Beach, California, and his Chevrolet, and Dennis Dyer, another series veteran in the 77. Sixth row, Arizona driver Daryl Lamour in his Chevrolet, and Ron Eaton, the Spies Hecker car from up in the Pacific Northwest. Seventh row, Frank Moronsky in Chevrolet, Scott Hansen, the ASA standout, 
Moving to North Carolina soon to run for Rick Hendrick in his Chevrolet. Eight throw has another ASA veteran, Steve Holzhausen, driving car number 15. Kevin Richards in his Chevrolet in the 35. Ninth throw today, series veteran Brett Bell in car number 56. And Jim Englebright, who always runs well here in his Chevrolet. Roger Avons from Colorado in the 81 car will be on the inside of the 10th row with Tom Hubert in his Oldsmobile. He will learn some steel today. And the 11th row includes Bill Hittner in the Chevrolet and Jim Pennant in the 03 car, also a Chevrolet. Kenny Shepard in the 95 and Bob Lyon, one of the great stars of the Southwest Tour in row 12. Mark Bold in the 13th row with Sean Monroe in the 48, very strong here earlier this year. 14th row includes Ron Peterson and Danny Crafton. 16th to 15th row, Ken Peterson in his Chevrolet, and John Walsh in car number 28. Row 16, Jeff Hill in his Chevrolet, and John Pox in the 66, another veteran of the Southwest Tour. Row 17, Bill Lawrence and Keith Spangler, a couple of Chevrolet mounted drivers today. And the 18th row has Mark Wilson and Kirk Rogers. Rogers from Spokane, Washington, the Northwest Tour standout. Row 19, Mark Beach and Kenny Hendrick, who has an interesting racing background. We'll talk more about him as the day goes on. 20th row, Phil Perry and Roger Mears Jr. These are drivers who made it out of the consolation race yesterday. And the final row has Doyle Olson in a Pontiac, the 67. Mac McGarry from Sacramento in car number 85. 42 cars ready to take green. Buddy Baker there on the track for a couple of warm-up laps this afternoon. Well, what they're doing right now, you see the uh, crews there. That's the corner workers and all, giving them thumbs up. That means the racetrack is secure and everything's good out there. Our pit road reporting today. Glenn Jarrett is with us as well as Randy Pemberton. Let's check in with Glenn. Well, thanks, Rick. We're down to Michael Austin's pit. He's the pole sitter. This is only his fourth start here at Phoenix, and this is his first career pole ever. He doesn't have any top tens this year. He's running strong in the points. He's really looking forward to today's race. A lot of inexperience here, but these guys think that they can get the job done. they got to fight the racetrack as well as the elements. Now let's go down to Randy Pemberton. Well, thank you, Glenn. As we've already documented, starting in the eighth position today is the guy with the points lead coming into this event. That's Chris Rodman. Now, one thing that is unusual about today's event is the guy that is second in points is his older brother. That is Craig Rodman. The most funny thing that has happened over the last week, and I'm standing right in front of Chris Rodman's pit, that is the fact that uh, his brother offered him an all-expense paid vacation not to show up here. He can take a vacation for about four or five days. That's because uh, all Chris has to do is take the green flag here this afternoon, and he will take his 158-point lead and turn that into a Southwest Tour NASCAR championship. Looks as though that championship is locked up, though. The cars have fired and have rolled away on a couple of pace laps here this afternoon. Chris Robin will start from the eighth spot out of Redding, California. And once the green drops, he will lock up the championship. 35 Chevrolets will take the green today. A couple of Fords and Pontiacs and that lone Oldsmobile in the lineup. 14 tour wins so far this year for Chevrolet. By far the dominant brand of car. This is the 18th and final round of the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour Championship here in 1996. Buddy, you were telling us earlier, despite the wind and the, the dust here, the drivers really won't face much of a problem. Well, they w I don't think they'll face much of a problem as far as visibility. It looks a lot worse looking into the sun uh, going down the front straightaway with all the dust that's blowing around here. Once you get locked into your uh, groove that you run around the racetrack, it'll look more like what you're seeing right now than a distant shot that you see on uh, some of the cameras when we were shooting across the racetrack. Field ready to go green in just a couple of moments. Glad to have you with us today on TNN Motorsports for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour season finale. We'll be back at Phoenix International Raceway in just a moment. All right, Shua. Shua. <laughs> <coughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay, here are some wild lines in three, two, and one. We'll be back at Phoenix right after this. In <laughs> okay, in three, two, and one. A real wind blowing here in Phoenix today. More Southwest Tour racing after this. Want another one? In three, two, and one. NASCAR's Featherlight Southwest Tour on the track. We'll be back with more action at Phoenix in a moment. Want to welcome back or anything like that? Okay, in three, two, and one. Welcome back. A hard wind blowing at Phoenix International Raceway today. The NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour on the racetrack. Bet, bet. Hope that 
to hope they've got it done for you. Did I mention this, Wendy? <coughs> yes, I think it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it might, it might make an interesting story for us. I don't know if there's anything to it or not, but there's a Union Jack flying in one of the pits down there. I say. I see it right here. Yeah. Track up. Yeah, Ted Kennedy, the crew chief for uh, Chris Rodman, has uh, talked to his uh, driver, and he's saying that... Uh, the breeze down in three and four is so bad that it continuously is blowing the dust over there. He said it's upsetting the cars just under these conditions right here. Oh, and, uh, my. So they're, he's real concerned. He said they don't want to go. Ooh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> don't go under the bridge. Earl's the bridge. <laughs> same thing from uh, the post hitter's pit. Really? They're saying, yeah, they're yeah, saying they're it also says that... Uh, you can't see anything at 60 miles an hour. The wind's blowing the cars all over the racetrack. Yeah, and they said whatever dust. Do we have an end car off. camera? Uh, no. We have uh, an car. Sound truck, I've got a tremendous echo in my a uh, uh, little bit of a vibration yeah. or something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Overmodulation. That's going to be a. You hearing problem. that, Randy? No, I'm, mine's okay, Glenn. Oh, mine's got a real bad uh, buzz, or not a buzz. I don't know what the hell it is. It doesn't sound good. It's your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Did you see how much dirt was on the glasses that guy's wearing? That shall be the danger. Yeah. Well, yeah, you get those, get a sandblasted windshield running down into the corner there. You know, that's one of the things that uh, Darlington that you have problem with is the sand. It's the sandblasted windshield yeah. late in the race you can't see. Yeah. Pam don't care. <laughs> well, you yeah, see yeah. how clear that is. Well, there, now, that's not a visibility problem right there. They already took today off, Mike. They got nowhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> no. you, you see this shot? Now, that's what it looks like on the racetrack. Yeah, I hear you. That can't be a problem. It's been a few years since I've been here on Friday, but this is a great crowd for them on a Friday it, afternoon. It is actually uh, improving dramatically Yeah, it yeah, sure here. does seem as though it <laughs> it's is. It's unbelievable. Uh, the dust has died down. The wind's died down a little bit. Obviously, that's why the dust died down. Well, they're not blowing dust out from underneath the car now when they go down the front straightaway either. I can actually see all the way to turn four now. There hey, Glenn. Go. Yeah. You be careful on the front straightaway. That, that pit road looks really, really dangerous as far as the amount of dust and stuff that's built up on it. I promise you, I ain't getting nowhere near them. Good. <laughs> You've seen, seen these guys I've run seen before. These guys drive before. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing I thought we might do is talk about the relative lack of experience some of these drivers have. Uh, I actually saw a uh, what was it a midget get a cross pit wall here. That was uh, Stan Fox. That's yeah. right, Stan Fox. Believe it or not, Glenn, we're looking down yeah, the back. Yeah, and I was not talking about Drano. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Drano. No respect at all. Mm -hmm. uh, 
one I'm more cup of coffee Chris this morning. Rodman's. Me too. Hopefully. I'd love one right now. Ooh, would that be good? Martha's usually good to bring us a cup of coffee, I know. too. <laughs> yeah, mud. They're sending a bird dog out. There well, goes Flying Brian. Just how much do these guys think they need to see? Gary Smith. Less than that. What Outside they're saying point. is it's good for a lap or two, and then all of a sudden yeah. it's not so good. Hey, we, Glenn. We, we heard the rather colorful description from the guy down there. Hey, Glenn. Yo. I've seen them run Riverside I, with the fog so bad that you couldn't see the next corner. I ran at uh, uh, Ontario. Uh, the last race they had there, remember, buddy, when the Santa Ana winds came in, we all went down into one in the first lap, and you couldn't see anything. That was 1981, uh, 1980. Yeah. No, sir. Finish, <laughs> finish 12th, I'll have you to know. All right. There's something about wow. not being able to see that makes you a little careful. Ask, yeah, ask Baker where he <laughs> finished. Where did I finish? 13. I know I won it one time. <laughs> <laughs> not in 1980, though. You won, it, you won it before that. Yeah. I remember watching you at Riverside kick up a lot of dust like this at times. Yeah, I made it all the way around on the pavement. They stood up and cheered <laughs> one time. <laughs> well, well. But oh, my. Oh. oh, there was the kiss Whoa. of death right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that means they're in big trouble. Get the spatulas, boys. It's going to be a long afternoon. That means big trouble. Yeah, because a, race, okay. a race driver using his head. Who ever heard of such a thing? Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Dun, da, da, da. All right. That'll give them time to let it get dusty on the track again. There you go. Man, I'd want to go. The windshield looked good to me. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, tell. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway. The field on the racetrack under caution because of the high winds and dusty conditions we've seen here this afternoon. Officials talking about the situation. Buddy Baker, I think we're going to be ready to go here shortly. Yeah, I think they're, they're right now discussing the wind problem that they have down the back straightaway. These cars will turn three to 400 more RPM with the help down the back straightaway of this wind that's blowing and make the car really unstable getting into turn three. So that's going to be the problem today, I think. Michael Alsop's crew chief, Michael, on the pole today, the son of former IndyCar driver Bill Alsop, and his crew chief talking to some of the NASCAR officials here. Phoenix International Raceway, a very fast racetrack. These cars lapping at an average of 130 miles an hour here, so straightaway speeds I would think would be 165, 175 miles an hour. They're going to be about uh, the first four or five laps, I think you're going to be about 10 or 15 mile an hour faster than they think you're running down that back straightaway. That's going to be the whole deal, but... You know, they have raced here before. They have a lot of notes, and I'm sure they have the cars pretty well set up here. Gary Smith from Victoria, British Columbia, the 79 car there on the outside of the front row. He was set out as a rabbit a few moments ago to sort of check, check track conditions out. Some of the drivers reporting on the radio, evidently, that they don't feel the conditions are quite right yet to allow us to go racing here this afternoon. So the NASCAR officials handling the Southwest Tour season finale. Elmo Langley driving the pace truck, bringing the field down onto pit road. The drivers and crews will get a chance to clean the windshields and clean the grills and get settled down, hopefully, so that we can put this one under green in just a couple of moments. Let's find out a little more about the situation here this afternoon. Glenn Jarrett is on pit road for us today. Yeah, and Mike also just brought the pole sitting car in, Rick, to uh, clean the windshield, clean the, clean the grill. His crew chief, Mark Stahl, one of the things that you're doing right now is giving him a different pair of goggles. The ones he had weren't not quite dark enough for all the uh, sun, the glare that you're seeing going into turn one. They're really concerned. Crew chief Dana Stahl was, in, was pleading with the NASCAR official, Ray Judy, just a few moments ago, hey, we can't start this thing. The track conditions are just not favorable enough right now. Meanwhile, right behind him, uh, Mark Reed in number 73, who's also starting up toward the front of the field, telling his crew the very same thing, that it's good for a couple of laps, then the wind kicks up, and it makes conditions terrible again. What about down on your end, Randy? 
Well, that's basically what the drivers are saying. They're having to clean not only the outside windshield, but they have to dip in there and clean from the inside as well. There's plenty of dust inside the cockpit of these cars. Now, if uh, this race does indeed get started here in the next few laps, I'll give you an idea. It's 45 miles an hour on pit road today. They're Goodyear Eagles. Uh, that's what they'll be riding on. They'll be able to change all the tires they want under green flag conditions. But during caution flags, only two tires at one, at one particular time will they be able to change. So uh, Chris Rodman is in. They've cleaned his windshield, cleaned his grill. Lots of debris uh, flying around in the air and uh, being uh, uh, caught up in the grill. They've cleaned all that off. They're getting ready to go ahead and roll back onto the racetrack. We're looking for a green flag condition. So we'll see what it's like when they get up to speed here. Crews continuing to work on these cars. The NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour machines ready to go. 186 laps around Phoenix International Raceway today. 300 kilometers our race distance. As we get a look at that 79 car on the outside of the front row, Gary Smith from Victoria, British Columbia, down from the Northwest Tour ranks to take a run here today at Phoenix to close out the 1996 season and a very good qualifying run for that team in the Rabanco. Chevrolet. We're going to take a quick time out here at Phoenix International Raceway, bring you back, and hopefully be able to put this one under green. You're on TNN Motorsports, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. Okay. Well, boys, what do you think? Well, <laughs> one one thing we might look for, guys. This is the first time that uh, Ossoff has been on the pole. This is okay. a super speedway. It's only his fourth start here. In NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour history. So we're about set to go. These cars have been on the track for 10 or 15 laps. Buddy Baker blowing all the dust off, making sure everything is going to be fine. And the conditions have improved quite a bit in the last couple of minutes. I think what we have right now, Rick, is one moment is pretty good, and then uh, all of a sudden a dust cloud will come in, cover the speedway up, and then it'll improve again. Hopefully it'll stay good for these guys because at its best, it's, it's still going to be awfully quick down the back straightaway with this tailwind that you have. Michael also has the pole in the 61. That's the white machine on the inside. Gary Smith in the 79 on the outside of row one. Elmo Langley brings the Chevrolet pace truck in. We're set to go green at Phoenix. Glad you're with us for the Southwest Tour. will lead him down into turn one to complete the first lap. He's got Smith and Brian Germoni right behind him. It's been nice and smooth so far, buddy. Well, there, you can see also right there coming out of turn two and down the back straightaway. There's a little dog leg there. You can see the 79 car trying to get up under him as he go down into turn three. Smith makes a look down there, taking a shot at him, but can't quite do it. Now he'll drop low on the speedway, and Gary Smith in that 79 may have a chance as they come to the stripe on lap two. Mark Reed's making a real challenge going into turn one. You see Allsop just kind of back out. It's too early in the race to take any chances on the outside because there's still a little dust out of the groove there. So Reed just takes the lead and he heads down the back straightaway. Gary Smith in the 79 car with a powerful move to get around Allsop there as they race into turn three. We've got one car on pit road already. It's Phil Perry, teammate to Brian Germoni today in the 51. Your leader is Smith from Canada. Allsop is second, third is Germoni. Fourth in the two car is Craig Rodman, who is second in the season points right now, and he wants a victory here to cap off the 1996 campaign. That's a good battle for third as they move up onto the backstretch. Mark Reed sits in fifth spot right now in the 73. He started third, so he's dropped back a couple of notches now. Chris Rodman, who's claimed the season championship by starting sitting in 11. Leaders out of the main straightaway to put another lap on the board, and it's the 79 car. Gary Smith from Victoria, British Columbia, who's out in front. Also rides in second spot. Brian Germoni sits third. Craig Robin in the two, looking as though he may take a shot at third spot here as they come down the back stretch. Driver's doing a nice job so far, but we had one car get out of shape up in turn one. This is the 50 automobile. Getting twisted around. That's Jim Inglebright from Fairfield, California. Almost lost it there. 
you wouldn't want to be on the high side, I wouldn't think, up in turn one and two at this point. No, right now they're kind of walking the tight wire, and they don't want to make a mistake this early in the race. But uh, they're starting to run two by two down the back straight away and taking shots going into turn three right now. So competition's going to get faster and more as they go along here as the groove moves out just a little bit. One car perhaps with some early trouble, the 12. That's Mark Bold from Chinomish, Washington. Smoke coming out of the back end of that automobile. First couple of laps on the board this afternoon at Phoenix. We'll go 186 trips around this one mile over today, 300 kilometers. If we watch the 12 down into turn one. It's as though he has got some serious trouble. Battle here for sixth spot. The 73 is Mark Reed. Dennis Dyer in the white machine there. The 77 as he races low. Directly in front of him, one of the drivers moving up quickest of all. Ron Eaton in the seven. This, though, a great battle for sixth spot as these cars move down to the turn one. The 73 of Mark Reed started third. Dennis Dyer in that 77 started tenth. So Dyer moving up. It looks as though he's working well on the low side. Leaders on the back stretch. The 79 still setting the pace. That's Gary Smith. This is the battle for third spot. Craig Rodman in the two. Brian Germoni in the five car. He's fourth. And Ron Eaton from the Pacific Northwest in car number seven. He is up from 12th to fifth here in the early going. Steve Eaton there in the number seven. He's a KGO veteran of this division here. Look at this for the pass here. A little further back in the pack, the 77 of Dyer now getting to the inside of Reed. That is a race for position. So give Dennis Dyer the spot as they move up. He'll take over six now from Mark Reed as the field moves under the Goodyear Bridge and up onto the main straightaway. Good battling a little further back in the pack. Leaders have started to open up some distance now as we watch the 73. There's Eaton to the inside of Germoni, so give Ron Eaton fourth spot as they move into turn one. Ron Eaton makes the pass on Germoni. He is a great star of the NASCAR Northwest Tour. The Repco Northwest Tour runs with the Southwest Tour car from time to time. Very, very strong. And that's Spies Hecker number seven, the 95 season champion, in fact, in the Northwest Tour. Leaders again onto the main straightaway. Germoni there back in fifth. Trying to hold off Dyer, who is sixth. As they work turns one and two here in the Phoenix Mile. Dyer takes a look to the inside, doesn't quite have enough. But when you come up onto the back stretch here at Phoenix with that dog leg, is that a place where you can pass coming off the second corner? Here? What you actually try to do is get under the car through the dog leg there and get yourself in position where you have the low line going into turn three. Once you establish that line, the outside has to give way. Dyer established that coming off the fourth turn. Dennis Dyer in the 77. He moves by Brian Germoni to gain fifth spot. So Germoni backpedaling here early, and we didn't expect to see that. He started in the fourth spot. Germoni has dropped back down to sixth in the early going. We put 11 laps on the board here today. At Phoenix, your leader continues to be Gary Smith. Michael Lawson is second. Craig Rodman runs third in the two car. This is a little further back. This is fourth, fifth, and sixth. Up onto the main straightaway. Mark Reed in the 73 car, running seventh. Now your leaders out of turn two. There's Gary Smith in the 79. He's established about an eight-car leg lead over Michael Alsop. Early in the going at Phoenix, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. We'll be back. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway on TNN Motorsports. Leaders up in turn one and two. The 79 car of Gary Smith continuing to show the way here. He's just lapping some of the back markers now. He's still got about a nine, ten car length lead over Michael Alsop. Gary Smith at this point, buddy, I would think is just going to be content to ride, not overextend the car very much. Well, right now, you can tell he's just getting around the racetrack perfect. Uh, he's running a very nice line around the racetrack. I don't think he's pushing the car as hard as it'll run, but you can see he's not washing way out wide. The car is not fishtailing in. It looks like it's really tracking well, and he's on his way right now. Keep you posted on how the field is running, of course, across the top of your screen. We're chasing that car, the 79 of Gary Smith. Qualified second quickest to 27.655 seconds here this weekend. This a battle now for third spot. Greg Rodman in the deuce trying to hold off Ron Eaton in the seven car. The 77 of Dennis Dyer right in there in fifth spot too. But this is a dogfight for third. Rodman in the two desperately trying to hold off Ron Eaton now as they work turns one and two. Well, the seven car Ron Eaton is a 
If you can see the windshield on that car, it's got tape all the way down. It looks like you couldn't see out of it. That's because of the glare going into turn one. The cars really have to run a lot of tape on the windshield so they can see to get in the corners here. Ron Eaton, a KG veteran, as Buddy pointed out, he's been at it over 25 seasons. Greg Rodman has three victories in 1996 and 17. Southwest Tour starts currently very much in the point chase up in the top five. Trying to solidify his position here in the last race of 1996 as we watch Eaton, who has moved now into fourth spot. Dyer is fifth, and Reed right behind him in sixth. Well, the driver on the move is Scott Hansen, who won this race one year ago. Hansen in the 53 car, moving by the five of Germoni. This is a battle for position, so Hansen gets up to seventh spot now, and he is flying very nicely in the early going. Right, Randy? Well, he certainly is. I've talked to his crew chief, Jimmy Schrader, down here, and I, I wanted to know if there was anything wrong with the car at first because it appeared that he was pushing coming into one down here, which is one place that I can observe him from. But uh, he said that he hasn't said anything over the radio. He actually, the only thing he has said was early on, he said, I am going to take my time. So uh, that's, that's the story down here from the 53 pit. How long can these guys go before they pit? Probably about 50 to 60 laps on tires. They could go much further on fuel, but uh, they'll probably run about 60 or so green flag laps before they'll pit for fresh rubber. So we could expect to see at least a couple of stops here this afternoon, undoubtedly, depending on how the cautions fall. Scott Hansen, the ASA standout. That is his Jerry Gunderman car that he's going to be vacating here at the end of the 1996 campaign. Moving south, he'll be coming to Charlotte to uh, run an ASA car for Rick Hendrick and Kenny Schrader, who are joining as co-team owners, as we reported on race day back some time ago so Scott Hansen's career is going to take a little bit of a turn although he'll continue to be active in the ASA series which we'll continue to see here on TNA. Meantime we take a look at the five and Germoni backpedaling started fourth he's back to eighth right now Doug McCowan in the 34 challenging him McCowan is ninth another veteran of the Southwest Tour right behind them in the 40 car Frank Moransky so that's a good battle for position. Eighth, ninth, and tenth right now as they race down into turn three. We've completed 20 miles here this afternoon at Phoenix, and there's Moronsky to the inside of Doug McCoon. That's a good move out of turn four, buddy. Yeah, but you see he lost a lot of track position there by going low. You can see McCowan really get a jump off that corner, pull about a full two-car length down the front straightaway. McCowan's starting to move the groove up a little bit off the bottom part of the racetrack. Looks to be running quite well out there. Take a look at that battle up onto the backstretch right now. There's racing crew three. Scott Hansen was a part of that battle a moment ago, but he's checked out. He's moved way out in front of that group. One car in the pits here this afternoon. Chris Trickle, Las Vegas. We expected to see a lot from Trickle today, but uh, he's having some problems. He, cer he certainly is, Rick. Uh, he's come down pit road. Now they've got the car jacked up. Unfortunately, Chris Trickle has lost his brakes. I can see brake fluid dripping, uh, dripping from the left front. They've taken the tire off. They're going ahead and look at it. Uh, could be a problem with the left front brake caliper. They took the hood off, and uh, these cars are not like Winston Cup cars where they can just hinge the hood and uh, hold it up. They took the pins out, and the, hit, and the hood literally flew about 20 feet. Uh, we all had to duck down here, but uh, they're going to work on the car, unfortunately, for Trickle. He's going to lose valuable points because he's had a heck of a year. He's up there inside the top five. Back on track, we watch Doug McCowan in action in the 34 car. He is sitting ninth at the moment. He races down into turn three, trying to get to the outside and make a move. And there's the champion for this year. That's Chris Rodman there in the 93, moving up now. Uh, really, he's got the championship made, so he's starting to really rumble. He's probably having fun for, for a change because when you're trying to protect a, a, a lead in the points, you don't drive quite as hard. Now he can just let her rip and have a lot of fun today. <laughs> Robin gets back by McCowan. They started alongside each other in seventh and eighth spots. They both drop back a couple of positions here in the early going. They're sitting right now in the tenth and eleventh position. Everybody chasing the leader, Gary Smith, as we watch this group of cars come up onto the main straightaway here. The 53 of Hanson doing a nice job here in the early going as well. We watch the 35 car. That's uh, Richards moving down into turn one. Kevin Richards from Spokane, Washington, the Monaco Enterprises Chevrolet. Coming along in ninth position, right behind him, the 93 of Chris Rodman. Sitting in 10th, working down the back straightaway. They lap quickly here, less than 30 seconds to get around this one mile oval in these Southwest Tour cars. So it won't take long for these guys to get to pit stop time. Back up front, Gary Smith in the 79th car, putting another car lap down. That's the 22, Bill Lawrence from British Columbia, Canada, the Central Water car. 
And Smith moves to the outside. Oh. Laps by some slower traffic as well. Well, he's just having it his own way right now. Uh, Smith is just driving. He, when he goes in, he can hold the car right down on the yellow line. He can let it go up. But the car itself is really working well, and Smith is driving a perfect race so far. Very, very smooth. Came from the outside pole with the drop of the green. Got by Michael also in the first lap, and he hasn't been headed so far now. Look at this traffic jam down to the inside. We've got a battle here and some smoke out of the 15 car. That's Steve Holzhausen, the ASA veteran. One car blows way up high, too, in the dust. It gives you an idea of how dusty it's been here for much of the weekend. Looks like Holzhausen in the 15 has got a motor problem. He drops to the inside way off the pace, and he pulls the wide world of maps car right off the track on the backside. So Steve Holzhausen will go no further here this afternoon. He almost took a couple of cars out with him. That was very fortunate. Usually when you have a car that uh, loses the motor going in the corner like that, they can lock the rear tires and really create a problem for the car coming up. He was lucky he got on the uh, clutch in time. No problem. Just coasted right on in the back straight away. No caution, no anything. Gary Smith in the 79 car still lapping the automobiles a little deeper. And look at all the paper he's picked up there in the early going, buddy. This could cause uh, overheating problems if they're not careful. It could, and it changes the downforce on these cars. You get a big piece of paper on the front, plays off some of the nose section. It makes the car's nose stick a little tighter than you want it. It makes the car a little bit loose. So uh, it depends. If you have a, a real tight condition, it would help. But the main thing, you don't want to run the water hot. And it, you can see right there, Smith has picked up a rather large piece of paper. Little twitch right in front of him, the 57 automobile back in 27th position there. That's uh, Mark Richards, and he's trying to move out of the way, let Gary Smith get by. So Smith breaks by the lapped cars and moves back into the clear just a little bit. Gary Smith in the 79, about to put another lap on the board, coming up on the 29 car, the 21 car, we should say. The 21 of Ken Peterson from Kentfield, California. Gary Smith is your leader. We put 30 laps on the board at Phoenix. We'll be back with more. at Phoenix International Raceway, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour, their season finale, 300 kilometers this afternoon at Phoenix International Raceway. With Benjamin, Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, Randy Pemberton with you this afternoon on TNN Motorsports, and Gary Smith is wearing them out in the 79 automobile from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Started second here this afternoon. He has not been headed, but he's picked up some more junk on the front of that car, buddy. Rick, I tell you, if he's wearing him out, though, I also don't know it because he's about 10 car lengths behind him there. You can see how close the race is between first and second right now. I think, uh, if anything, also I found a nice way around this racetrack, and he's really tracking well. Uh, he may be a little bit quicker than Smith right now. Since they broke out of the lap traffic, he has started to gain some ground. He's cut that margin down to a couple of car lengths. Contact up in turn one, the 22 and the 21. That's Bill Lawrence and Ken Peterson. They brush fenders going through one and two. The 22 is going to have a nice donut on the side of the car. There's the deuce of Craig Rodman running third, coming up to lap both those automobiles, the 21 and the 22. Among the cars, a couple of laps down their back, running 29th and 30th at this point. As we watch Peterson in the 22 car, and Bill Rodman Peterson in the 21. That's Bill Lawrence in the 22 getting by on the inside as they move down into turn one. What do you think about track conditions at this point, buddy? I think it's uh, a lot better. I'm sure the guys in the pits uh, could tell you that we're up here in the booth that we can't feel the wind blowing, but it looks like the visibility is a lot better. And uh, right now, it's great racing conditions. And you don't see anybody in any particular problems out there. Rod Eaton in the seven car doing a nice job moving back to the inside as he moves by some of the other cars. Ron Eaton tracking behind Craig Rodman, battling for third. Let's go to pit road. Well, Dennis Dyer has brought his number 77 machine on to pit road. Uh, they took the hood off. They feel they have a distributor problem. They have uh, taken the coil out. They're working on the electrical system. Problem with uh, Dennis Dyer is uh, he has gone so long without winning the race, he has the distinction of going the longest than anybody else, or longer than anyone else, 101 races since he has won a uh, Featherlight Southwest Tour event. And unfortunately, he's not going to win today after starting a solid 10th. 
Dennis Dyer being shown back at 38th spot but with the hood up on pit road probably not going to be a very long afternoon for Dyer and his team this afternoon we watch the leaders down into turn three Gary Smith and right behind him also and now this battle is for 10th spot Doug McCowan in the 34 Ryan Germoni in the five directly in front of the good race there well you were talking about Germoni a while ago he is definitely not getting around this racetrack in the way that he normally does because uh, he, he started right up front and now he's pedaling his way right back through the top ten and you can see McCowan gaining on him every corner to go into. Germoni with a good season under his belt. Couple of victories in the Southwest Tour. McCowan also with a win this season but uh, it looks like either of these cars will be much of a factor at least here in the early going. We're still early. It's still only about 35 miles down. 150 laps remaining here on this mile oval. Well, the one thing we talked about uh, earlier in the broadcast is these cars are very easy to make a change on. When you make your pit stop, you can really do a lot of work in a short time on them and make them work. So a lot of the cars that are not in contention right now will be later when they make the first stop. Is it a tire pressure adjustment that would help the most probably in these cars? Well, they do run the re regular tires instead of the radial. They run the bias fly tire, so they're staggered. They can change. They can also adjust things so quick on these cars because they're handmade, and they really have a lot of adjustments on them that are easy to work on. 34 McCowan right behind the five of Germoni as they battle for 10th spot here at Phoenix out of turn four. Germoni able to hold McCowan at bay at this point. And a six car length bulge right now down the main straightaway into turn one. Leaders mean time Gary Smith in the 79 Michael Alsop in the 61. Glenn Jarrett standing by with Gary Smith's crew chief. What does he think so far Glenn? Well, look right now he's standing above us up on the war wagon and it's no wonder that Gary Smith is having the success he's having here today. This is only his third time at Phoenix yet he's clearly the best in the field right now but his crew chief the young man you're looking at is Kelly Tanner. Now, that may not mean much to a lot of folks, but you Northwest Tour fans know that Kelly Tanner is the 1996 NASCAR Northwest Tour champion. He is serving as crew chief here today. Kelly has a racing products business. That's what he does. He definitely is doing good for his business today because he's got Gary Smith running out front here today. That's a pretty good guy to have as a crew chief, a tour champion. Can't do much better than that, can you, buddy? <laughs> no, you'd love to have somebody like that on the crew, but uh, you could see just a second ago, Smith got t really caught up in a heck of a, a battle there. These cars are trying to stay in the lead lap. He come in there and got kind of wedged in behind a bunch of cars. Right now is when race leaders have to be careful. When they're coming up the lap cars, you have to have a lot of patience, Rick. Also really catching up here, gaining a lot of ground. He's cut the margin down to about three-tenths of a second. He's got a lap car right between the two of them. That's the aid of Ron Peterson from San Bernardino, California. Peterson will tuck in behind Smith in the 79. Also trying to find a way to get around the eight car and get up there and challenge. He's completed 40 miles at Phoenix, and your leader is still Smith in the 79. Whoa. Close one there out of four. <laughs> that was a little more than close. He gave him a little nudge there. They don't have bumpers on these cars. That's a fiberglass nose on these cars, but they can root with them a little bit because they have a pretty good-sized bar in behind this to reinforce that fiberglass. So they can root and gouge just a little bit with these cars. And also rooted and gouged his way by the eight, so he's got clear racetrack now up ahead to the leader, Smith. See if Michael Alsop can do much with Smith, although Smith has broken away by just a little bit. Look a little further back in the pack now. We'll take a look at the 67 car, the 73 of Mark Reed, and the 40. And doing battle back there. This is for fifth spot, Frank Moronski in the 40. And he's right up behind Reed, who has turned up the rick quite a bit. Reed by about two car lengths over Moronski as they race down to turn one. Reed had dropped back quite a bit in the early going, but he's gathered it back up and seems to have picked up the pace quite a bit. A couple of wins in the season for him as well. It looked like Moronski's car, the 40 there, uh, was a little bit loose getting in the corner, especially in the turn one. The back end kind of swished a little bit on him. I'm sure he don't like that feeling because uh, the one thing you don't want here is go in the corner, turn into the right instead of the left. <laughs> Never a good condition to have on the racetrack. Battle down into turn three for fifth spot once again. Mark Reed in the 73. Frank Moronsky Jr. in car number 40 as they work up onto the back straightaway. Gary Smith in the meantime in the 79 continues to lead. He's about to put the 46 another lap down as they work down the main straightaway into turn one. The 46 Danny Crafton from Tulare, California. NASCAR's Featherlight Southwest Tour on TNN Motorsports. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> who, who did that? Who died?
who did I, who did who, I have leading the first Who's our runner down there? <laughs> <laughs> who do you have in the pool, man? <laughs> They're having too much fun down there, I yeah. think. Too much fun. We are back at Phoenix International Raceway. Rick Benjamin and Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett on pit road with Randy Pemberton today. Watching Gary Smith lead this NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour show today at Phoenix. This is the finale for these cars, 300 kilometers today, and the Canadian in the 79 has opened back up a 1.1 second lead, so he's really started to stretch it out. Michael also closed up in lap traffic, but now Smith has stretched it out. A little contact here a moment ago as Smith came up on a lap car. Getting into Danny Crafton's automobile there. He was able to get by Crafton right after that incident. So Smith continuing to run nice and smooth. Take a little bit further back in the pack. Jim Inglebright in the 50. Moving up. He is 15th right now. Trying to hold off Bob Lyon in the 44. And Lyon gets by him coming out of turn two. So give Lyon 15th spot. Bob Lyon, one of the real veterans of this series in that orange 44. Yeah, the 44, there's a huge story that's uh, connected. You see the little spots on the front of that car? Yeah. That's children's hand prints from uh, the Ronald McDonald uh, Hospital House that they have. And uh, every Easter, they they put the car in the uh, front part of the uh, hospital there, and the kids come down, they have it right with plenty of Easter, Easter baskets and all. And uh, he does a lot for charity. And uh, he started more racing than anybody else in the Southwest Tour. Lion, a guy who has really raced up and down the west coast of these United States and won a ton of races on short tracks all over. And 15th here this afternoon in car number 44. And a nice shot in that Chevrolet Monte Carlo. We give him a salute. The Ronald McDonald House does wonderful work in all parts of the country. So that is a very worthwhile effort that he is a part of as Lion works on the 28 car directly in front of him in 14th spot. 28 being driven here this afternoon by John Walsh. He's from Riverside, California. The clearance center Chevrolet and Lyon looks like he's got enough to make a move on him as they race out of turn four. We look a little further ahead in the pack right now. The 82 car running up in there as well. That's the running in 13th spot right now. That's the car of Bill Hittner from Motor Point, Oregon. And Ken Peterson there in the 21. Lyon got a little loose that time it looked like. We don't want to get real loose because uh, as you can see, the cars are right down on the bottom of the racetrack as they race through the corner just above about where they're at right there. You can see the gray part of the racetrack. That is really, really dirty up there. And if you got up there, I'm sure you would be in a lot of trouble until you got back down to the racing booth. You could spin real easy right now. Another change of position in that battle. Jim Inglebright has gotten back around Lyon. Inglebright in the green 50 car. They're battling for 14th and 15th spot. Inglebright had given up the position to Lyon, but Lyon got picked off in lap traffic there a moment ago, and Inglebright was able to sneak back by him. So Inglebright back to 14th. That drops Lyon back to 15th spot now as they race through turns three and four. Weather conditions here have improved dramatically since we put this one under green. The wind has died down quite a bit. Still very breezy, but the dusty conditions that we had in the early going here that forced NASCAR officials to run the cars for 20 laps or so under caution that this, before the green came out, that's improved tremendously. You see the 48 there, that's Sean Monroe. That's the guy they call the surfer dude. And if you ever seen him, you'd know why. He's got about two, three different color hair. And uh, i tell you what, he's a wild man. But he can <laughs> drive a race car. Sure can as they battle. Englebright and Lyon still going at it, coming out of turn four. You know, a lot of drivers in this series have aspirations of moving up further on the NASCAR ladder, maybe to one of the more touring series. Bob Lyon talked about his aspirations. It's most definitely what our goals are. But being the owner and the driver and all that, it's all financially driven uh, completely. So it's really an issue of money. There's no doubt. I, I know I could drive a truck or a Bush car, or Winston Cup car. Just the opportunities are very difficult for somebody on the West Coast. And then with the financial impact, it's just a double-edged deal. But we're working real hard to try to acquire some uh, bigger sponsorship. We're most definitely trying to aspire up to those divisions. Bob Lyon, meantime, and the rest of the field under caution. There's debris on the speedway here at Phoenix International. So everybody under caution. Lyon down into turn two, and the rest of the field slowing down. Elmo Langley will bring the Chevrolet pace truck 
up onto the racetrack right now. We've completed 55 laps of 186 here this afternoon. Our first caution period of the day. And, buddy, I think a lot of people were thinking this one might be full of cautions, but it's been nice and clean so far. It has. I mean, uh, remarkably so. Uh, you would think with the conditions they had, somebody would have probably turned somebody around. But, uh, you know, these guys, they, they've been here enough now. They have good notes, and uh, they're doing a great job out there. The Tour Cars, the Featherlight Southwest Tour, runs here twice a year. They run in February during the Copper World Classic and then the season finale here, the 300-kilometer event that's part of the Winston Cup weekend at Phoenix International. Gary Smith in the 79 is your race leader. Craig Rodman has moved up to second, and uh, Ron Eaton has moved to third now. So the 61 of Michael also ran into some problems, and he is no longer dogging Smith as we're under caution for the first time this afternoon. And as we are not quite to 60 miles, wonder if uh, many of these teams will be coming in for tires. You might think that we'd see at least a few cars elect to stop, but so far not the case. One car coming in, the 67 coming down onto pit road, and it looks as though they might open pit road here shortly. Shortly, uh, they'll open the pit road, and then everybody, I think, will probably come in and make some adjustments, take on fuel, and uh, probably uh, a lot of times they'll change two rear tires instead of going just to the right side. If they're sliding around a lot, they want to get a lot of traction on the rear. With the tire rule, they do a lot of strange things when they come in. Uh, not like uh, when Winston Cup cars come in. You can just about bet they're going to take on right sides, left sides, or all four. Field under caution. As we continue to circulate, first yellow flag of the afternoon. Michael Walsh in the 61, who ran second for so long, had made a pit stop earlier, so that's dropped him out of the lead group for the time being. Here comes Gary Smith. He'll lead the charge down onto pit road. And we'll see what kind of adjustments these teams make. Smith will come slowly down. And he's uh, so far about the only one. Now we see the deuce of Rodman coming down. Glenn Jarrett. Well, Gary Smith has brought the number 79 car in, guys. They're going to do uh, right side tires. As Randy told you, they can only do two tires under caution. They're also going to open the stagger up on the, on the uh, rear tire about an eighth of an inch. The car pushes just a little bit in the center of the corner. The crew chief, Kelly Tanner, told me they rented this car for this race only from Ron Eaton. Now, Ron's running third. Gary's running first. I believe Ron rented him the wrong car. Randy? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a very interesting story, Ron. He, he has uh, rents engines to different guys. He's got four engines in this race alone, not to mention uh, the Gary Smith car. Uh, they're in for right side tires. This is the wide five print having a little. Yes, they certainly are having problems at this particular time trying to get fuel in the car. Uh, they wanted to get another can in. They got the two right side tires changed. Ron Eaton down and away. And uh, several other cars still waiting on pit road to complete their service. Chris Rodman there and Ron Eaton almost coming together as they come off of pit road. Buddy Baker, uh, kind of the hurts of this uh, division of NASCAR, I guess, is Ron Eaton. Ron Eaton is quite a guy. I drove for him years ago, and he gave me the best car on that particular day, too. So <laughs> Ron Eaton really uh, uh, a class act. And uh, if you drive one of his cars, he does not take the best one and give you the worst. That is certainly a testimony to his stature in the sport. Everyone knows the name of Ron Eaton in the Pacific Northwest. Gary Smith back on the speedway. We're under caution at Phoenix. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, he does. He was just, he was burping it because he felt like the fuel <laughs> was just going in a little bit slow. So he was just making sure. Yeah. Hey, Glenn. Yeah. How many? How, can they take just two tires on on the yellow or green yeah. or what? Two tires on the yellow. Two tires okay. Under Change yellow. all they want on the green. Okay. Sixty-one is being shown back in twenty-first spot, so he is a lap down. Are there down. this many cars a lap down already? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're, they're showing uh, fifteen on the lead lap right now. Wow. I missed it. I didn't see also come into the pits. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, we, I think we covered it fine. But what did he make it on schedule? Yeah, he, he came in before the caution. Evidently. Say it, Say it again. 61 also, you know, was okay. second. He came in before yeah, okay. the caution, apparently. Uh, gotcha. I, I had gotcha. to ha I had to change my whole thought there, Glenn, because that was the whole story I had about oh, him. Oh, sorry, that Randy, I didn't No, know. man, that was <laughs> that was fine. But you said that, I went, ooh. Well, well okay. when you, when you <laughs> turn when the you corner pick it here, up, when you pick it up, I thought, boy, Randy, follow right up man, on I, that. Oh my, what is that? <laughs> no, the just, beaver. <laughs> what's the what's the picture again? Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course. 
Hey, hey. And Jerry Mathers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the other guy's name? The Beaver and who? Wally. Wally. Yeah. Well, that's it. And uh, Eddie Haskell. Eddie Haskell. <laughs> that's right, Eddie. Well, <laughs> the heavy Wait a minute. What was Lumpy? And Lumpy, Lumpy. Rutherford. Lumpy that's him, Lumpy. Lumpy. Clarence. <laughs> Clarence. <laughs> Clarence, of course. Did all these guys pick? Did everybody pick? Hey, man. Yeah. He was Lumpy's dad. <laughs> yeah, he was Lumpy's dad. All right, Gary Smith's got a left rear that's flat. Uh, ooh, there went track position. Bye, see ya. Right, but if it's flat, he ought to be able to change it. He's, he's there. Y'all got to. Here we go. Now, they, now they're just reshuffling the scoring. Okay. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour, and problems for the race leader, Glenn Jarrett. Well, they thought he had a flat left rear tire, Rick. Uh, they brought him in. They checked. The tire was okay. They checked the lug nuts, uh, snugged him up. He's okay. But I don't think that the uh, that the tire was flat. So I don't know. He might have been spinning in some uh, some of that dust and debris on the racetrack. I'll check with Kelly Tanner, find out exactly what the story was, and uh, get back to you. You can see the official there telling him with the uh, stop sign, when I put that thing out there, you stop. He'd give him a little piece of his mind there. Not a thing you want to do when you have to lose that much track position also. So Gary Smith being held on pit road back to Glenn Jarrett. We're going to talk to Kelly Tanner. He's talking with Gary right now, uh, Rick. But we'll see. Uh, Kelly thought that uh, or Kelly said that uh, Gary thought he had a tire going down. He's talking to him right now. We'll get a word with him in just a second. here. Now he has been the strongest car so far this afternoon. Look at him snake the car back and forth to check it and see what's wrong. He's going to have to restart at the back end of the field here, buddy. Well, the one nice part, if, if they double foul when they go back to uh, line them up, there's only 15 cars in the lead lap right now, so he'll be able to come all the way back up to there. Len Jarrett. Uh, Kelly, what, what happened out there? I know he thought he had a tire going down. What was the problem? I think he just picked up a bunch of drag rubber there, plus we spilled some fuel here on a pit stop, and I think that felt pretty greasy. He thought it was going down. We came in, took one lug nut off, end up putting it back on, sending him back out. Now you're a champion in the Northwest Tour. Uh, wouldn't you rather be out on the racetrack? I'd sure like to, but Gary's a good friend of mine. I made a commitment to him a couple months ago to come down and work on his race car, come down to win the race here today, and that's what we're going to try to do. Well, they're doing a good job so far. We'll see how he works traffic coming back up through there, guys. Scoring showing that Smith is on the lead lap at the tail end. He'll line up 15th on the restart. Michael Alsop is the first car one lap down right behind him. As we line him up behind the pace truck, about ready to get going here in just a couple of moments. 61 laps of 186 complete. We're about a third of the way home, so perhaps uh, one more tire stop might get these cars home this afternoon depends on how the caution periods fall pace truck is back in we're ready to go green craig rodman in the deuce the restart leader but he gets jumped at the start by the 14 car which is a lap car at this point hansen in the 53 being shown in second spot the deuce of rodman your restart leader as they come down into turn one Field up onto the backstretch, back under green. Ron Eaton in the seven, being shown fourth on the restart. He's trying to jump up in there. Chris Rodman in the 93, who's already been crowned the Southwest Tours champion for 1996 by taking the green here. Also up in the mix, out of turn four. The 14 goes by first. He's a lap car, as is also the two. Craig Rodman, your leader. And Scott Hanson's right up there. He's going to be a factor. You can see him there in the, in the 53, the white car there. He has moved right up on the back of as they go right down the back straightaway. He's not very far behind Rodman. The 14 moving away. He is trying to get back and has, in fact, gotten back on the lead lap, we believe. That'd be Kenny Hendrick from Chino, California, the driver whose sister, Kara, was a midget driver who was tragically killed several years ago, a story that many remember. Meantime, we watch Ron Eaton get by Scott Hansen there. So Eaton holding Hansen off. That's a battle for second spot. Mark Reed right in the mix, too. The 12 car. Back on the track, that's Mark Bold. He had a smoke problem earlier and dropped out for a while. They've gotten it fixed. He's back out there. Now Hanson to the outside, up onto the backstretch. Everyone trying to chase Craig Rodman in the two car. He's the current leader, but Hanson 
Got his hands full at the moment as they race into three and four. Hanson with the 12, dropping back just a little bit now. Remember, the 12 is a car that's a lap down. The 73 of Reed moves into third spot. And then you've got the 7 of Ron Eaton. He's in fourth. Doug McCowan is right there in the 34. He is in fifth. And, buddy, as you mentioned before, you can do a lot to these cars in a pit stop and gain track position and get right back in the thick of things. Well, you can see McCowan there, the 34. It looks to be uh, he made an adjustment on that car. He was running 10th just before they stopped. And now he's working his way right towards the front. Track position out here is so important because these cars run pretty much the same down the straightaway. And uh, if you get a little bit out of uh, sync on the track position, it can hurt you for 35, 40 laps. Leaders down through turns one and two. The two of Craig Rodman is the leader at the moment. He's out of the picture right now. There he is on the back stretch. He's trying to catch up now. The 61 of Michael Alsop, who ran second earlier, has gotten back on the lead lap, and he's at the tail end of the lead lap by getting by Roudman the last time by. Leaders work through three and four. Come up onto the main straightaway. The 35, you see there, Kevin Richard from Spokane, Washington. There's McCowan in the 34, and Chris Roudman in the 93 as they battle for fifth spot. We'll take a look a little further up the track. The 28 car also very much in the mix here this afternoon. That's the car being driven by John Walsh from Riverside, California. Mark Bold in the 12. Bold is a car that's a lap down at this point. One car slowing off the pace as they come out of three and four. There's Rodman and McCowan once again battling for fifth and sixth. And Rodman has the spot right now on McCowan for fifth spot. Onto the back stretch with McCowan. We've got problems here. Let's take a look at this. The 14 of Kenny Hendrick in trouble. Boy, I mean, he's way up there. Kenny Hendrick was very lucky not to get in the wall. You see him going out in the grass there. Wow. I don't believe I'd do that running that fast, <laughs> go out in that grass. That's like hitting grease or something when you go out in the grass. Look at Rodman there. What a great car coming up out of the corner here. That thing is a rocket ship right now. Greg Rodman from Redding, California in car number two. Michael Alsop in the 61, the pole sitter this afternoon. Last car on the lead lap being shown 15th. And trying to stay on the lead lap at this point. Rodman says, I'd like to get by you, please, and get going. The 73 of Mark Reed right there in second spot. So a good battle for the lead between Rodman and the Deuce and the 73 of Reed. We've got caution on the speedway for the second time this afternoon. The yellow is out. So Alsop will maintain on the lead lap right now. Craig Rodman will hold on to the lead as we sit under caution. Ron Eaton, Scott Hansen, and Chris Rodman, the top five, 71 laps on the board here today at Phoenix, and we are under yellow. As the crew continues to work on Kenny Hendricks, number 14, that watch the leader come off of turn four. Craig Rodman in that advantage memory Chevrolet taking over the lead, and we go caution. We're going to take a timeout at Phoenix International Raceway on TNN Motorsports. We'll be right back. Uh, what I need to do is remind you that also I've made that unscheduled stop. Yeah, he was fighting to get back in the lead lap. Now he is. Yeah, you need to document that and uh, anything down there, Glenn. Yeah, 79 is going to come in this time for left side tires. He's at the rear of the field anyway. Uh, can they move up? Can they not move up on the uh, lap cars? I was just watching on the restart there with single file restart. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't move up then. I'm going to I'm going to ask one of the officials. I never said it was a double file re restart, but uh, then we started talking about it, and I said, well, maybe they do. But that okay. <laughs> there he is. Uh, Rick. Yes. If you would, uh, when you're talking, if you'll look over this way every once in a while, there's a couple of times that I was trying to get your, and you were looking at your monitor. Randy, you're, yeah, you're being awful quiet. Well, I'm checking on uh, trying to figure <laughs> out what Hanson's doing here. Yeah. Oh, Surfer gonna, dude's running two. last two. Why, did, why is he so far back? Who? Surfer dude, number 48, Sean Monroe. <sighs> He's taking his time, dude. Oh, biding his time, dude. <laughs> uh-huh. Can't find the pipeline. 
Yeah, Hansen backed up, lost about what? He was second there. He's fourth. All right, here's the deal on the restarts, five. guys. Okay. It's single file only. You get this until the last 10 laps. Oh, uh, man. No, but wait. Then the last <laughs> 10 laps, the cars in the cars in the lead lap go to the front. Whew. Cars in the lead lap will go to the front. Back at Phoenix, pit stops. We're under caution for the second time this afternoon. Scott Hansen on pit road. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, I checked in once again with his crew chief, Jimmy Schrader, and uh, he was up to second and then backed up a little bit, was having trouble getting through uh, my particular vantage point down here in one and two. I asked him what the problem was, said the car is just loose. They can't seem to help it on the uh, previous pit stop. So they're going to come in here. They're going to jack it up, change left side tires. Now what they're doing is they're changing the tire pressure, which changes the stagger that they had. So hopefully now they can get the looseness out of the car. Scott Hansen on and away. Glenn Jarrett. And back up in Gary Smith's pits, they have come in, guys, to change left side tires. They just put those rights on. Remember, he thought he had a left side uh, tire going down. He did not, so he's got new lefts. He picked up some nose damage, some nose, some uh, damage to the front air dam on the very center of the car. Looks like he ran over something on the racetrack, possibly that brake rotor that the uh, caution was thrown for. Uh, speaking of cautions, when they do restart, guys, it's single file only until the last 10 laps. In the last 10 laps, then, the cars that are in the lead lap can go to the front of the field. The lap cars have to go to the back of the field. So you cannot uh, pull up beside the lap cars on a restart. Single file only. Signal file indeed will benefit certainly Craig Robin when we go back to green. He will restart on the pole. We've talked, buddy, about Michael Alsop in the 61 car. That unscheduled pit stop may work to his advantage. Well, it might because he is now back in the lead lap. He had a... He got out of sync just a little bit there and, and got a lap down because he did make a pit stop, but now he's made it up. He's back in the tail end of the uh, lead lap. And uh, I tell you, Gary Smith having to come back in and back in, he's having to start in the rear so many times. He's got a great race car, but whether he'll be able to overcome this track uh, condition, when you lose that much track position, you are really hurting your chances of winning. I know he'd like to get back up near the front. Not quite to halfway, 75 laps on the board next time by. 186 laps the distance here this afternoon. Craig Roudman will have the restart poll when we come back at Phoenix. Okay. Hey, Glenn. <laughs> Hey, Glenn. Yeah. That was good on that pit hour restarts and stuff. Thanks, man. That makes that makes a lot of difference to know what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I was just as confused as anybody yeah. else. We got an uh, interested uh, participant here, David Green. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he's standing on the pit wall. He just likes racing. He Everywhere does. I go, he's well, there. I'm sure there's a reason for this. I'm going to find out what it is when we go back to Green. 73. Is he uh, second? Yeah. The restart second. Two and 70, they've lined up in order. Eaton will go third, and, and then Rodman will restart fourth. McCown, uh, 28 is a lapped car. 12 is a lapped car. 82 is the next the car in line. 82 is sixth. That's Danny Hilber. And then Lyon in the 44 is seventh. Tom Hubert in the four. He's eight. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway on TNN Motorsports. Rick Benjamin and Buddy Baker on pit road for us today. Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. It's been a good one so far. Elmo Langley brings the pace truck in. We're about ready to go, and Craig Rodman will lead him to green. He's leading them down. His brother's now worked his way. Whoa, off. trouble right away. We got cars in the wall as they come off the fourth turn. Bob Lyon piles in. Other cars getting involved. Sean Monroe gets through. The five of Germoni is there. The 82 car very much in the middle of that. That's Bill Hittner. He was in the hunt today as well. Bob Lyon heavily damaged. Scott Hansen stayed out of it. I don't know how Scott Hansen made it through that hole there in the middle part of the racetrack. If he don't get hit right now, he's going to make it. Wow, I'm telling you, he went through a hole just big enough for the car to fit in, stopped the car, and did not get one fender bent or anything. Great job. Looked like the 82 of Hittner and the 44 of Lyon as they came off turn four to the green flag, got crossed up. 
One car got up on the outside wall, looked as though it was hitting her, and Lyon is backwards on the track. He's refired. Glenn Jarrett, what did you see down there? Well, I just happened to look up, uh, Rick, as they were all piling up in front of me, the cars you named. Also, Brian Germoni, number five, spun to miss everything. He got bumped just a little, but not bad. He was blocking the track. He refired, pulled the car in the wrong direction. In other words, he was going, let's see, he would have been going east instead of, or no, yeah, east instead of west. Went all the way down <laughs> at the other end of pit road. <laughs> Came on the pit road, flying down pit road, and NASCAR told him to slow down. He made a pit stop out of this. So not only did he did he uh, open the track up for the rest of the guys, but he took the opportunity to come into the pits too. Pretty cool thinking there. I would say so. Hard lick indeed. Kirk Rogers of Spokane, Washington there in the 29 car. The Richards used pickup parts machine. Looks like he'll need to pick up some new parts. Let's take another look at this as they came to the start. You can see this is a very narrow front straightaway. You see contact right there. As they start, watch these cars get up on the wall. You talk about very, very close there. Whoa. Lyon and Hittner, the 82 and the 44, there was contact from one of the cars on the inside and didn't pick out the number of the cars that came by, but uh, a lot of carnage, a lot of fiberglass and bent front end parts. The 17 car very much involved there. Daryl Lamore from Glendale, Arizona. As we take another look here on the main straightaway, watch the camera here. We're gonna lose a camera, I think, in this one. Ow. Good night. <laughs> That's what's left. Now you know how we get those pictures from the straightaways and how risky that is at times, at least to the equipment. Those are remote operated cameras, of course. And we work under caution now for the third time. Never really went green again. Let's take another look. This is going to be at actual speed as they come out of turn four. And wow. that's why I sit up here now and not behind <laughs> it. I will tell you what. You've been on the business end of those a few times. I have rode them down like that. It's no fun. Safety crew on the speedway cleaning up the 82 of Bill Hittner, the 29 car being taken care of. Kirk Rogers, one car has stopped up on the speedway up in turn two with some damage. Looked as though somebody spun up in that area too. A lot of damage to these cars as they came down the main straightaway. A lot of fiberglass and so forth. A lot of pieces of body uh, strewn across the speedway surface right now. And some moisture down as well. So the Phoenix International Raceway track crew is getting some speedy dry down there. They're working with Kenny Shepard right now, getting him out of the car. Apparently, uh, he sustained a little bit of an injury there. Looks a little sore as they got him out. They're looking at his arm, it looks like. Talking to him on pit wall right now. He's, he's fine, but a little bit shaken up, no doubt. That car took some heavy front end damage as well. Well, it certainly did, and uh, it's good to go get checked out. Uh, a lot of times when you jump out like that, your adrenaline's up, and you say, I don't need to go to the hospital. I feel fine. And you walk over to the garage area, and all of a sudden you go, boy, my leg hurts a little bit. And you go and find out you got a broken bone in it. So it's good to go get checked out. Just be sure. Third caution of the afternoon. We never really went back green. We were coming down to the restart after the second debris caution of the afternoon. And all sorts of carnage broke loose coming out of turn four. Cars got loose. Bob Lyon involved. And Bill Hittner in the 82. There's another car involved there as well. Let's take a look at it one more time. Looks as though somebody's trying to pass on the inside as they came toward pit road. The 12 of you see Lyon's Mark car, the 44 there. He really did not start that wreck. There was a car on the inside of him that touched him and really pushed him over into the other two cars that were on the outside there. Lines did not create that problem. Looks as though they were trying to go five wide coming down for the start there. A couple of cars on the inside. And a red flag is flying here at Phoenix International Raceway this afternoon. So the red flag has come out. There's so much to be cleaned up. It's going to take us a while. Let's go back to pit road, Glenn Jarrett. And here we stand with Kirk Rogers. He was driving the car number 29. Kirk, what happened out there? Well, it's hard to say. You know, you get all those cars up there. They're a couple laps down, and uh, they start tangling. It looks like maybe uh, somebody got into somebody, and everything broke loose. Your car looked like it got some damage. Uh, pretty wild ride for, for a while there. Yeah, I thought I had it squared away, and then I think we got hit from the back, and uh, that got me into the rest of it. So we'll go down and see if we can get it fixed, maybe get back out. That's that's what I like. A guy wants to get back out there. Randy. Well, Frank Moransky has stopped his car up here in turn one. Uh, Frank, how did you see the wreck, and what happened to you? Uh, everybody just getting real antsy. It happens every year, and uh, I just got caught up, and I thought I was clear, and somebody caught and tore the whole rear end out of the car, so our day's probably done. Okay, well, Frank Morowski, obviously you're okay. Oh, I'm fine, and uh, 
thanks to all my sponsors and everybody, and we'll be back. <laughs> okay, another guy that's going to be out of this one for the rest of the afternoon. Moratsky from Quartz Hill, California. Heavy right rear corner damage. Let's take one more look here to the inside. If you look to the right of your screen, there's a black car there, and the uh, orange and blue car that was alongside Lyon looked as though he moved outside sharply, and that may have turned Lyon around. That looks like the four car, Tom Holbert. Uh, got into him and uh, turned Lyon's car to the outside there and actually triggered this whole thing. It was just a racing accident. When we say somebody got into somebody, when you come off a corner like that and make contact with somebody, they don't mean to do that. It just happened. And the tires may be a little cooled down, too, because we've been under caution for several laps. Let's show you one more look from our camera outside the main straightaway as we slow it down. That was the 82 of Hitler that came by and took the camera out there. Field stopped up on the backstretch as we are under red flag condition. Let's go to Glen Jarrett. Guys, also one thing you see here, particularly in the Southwest Tours, on these caution flags, it bunches everybody up. When they run into green for a long time, it spreads them out. You got a lot of room on the racetrack. You can miss this stuff. But on that restart, everybody wants to get going in a hurry. Everybody wants to pass somebody. And it happens invariably, just like Frank said, every time they have uh, a race like this and on the restarts everybody bunched up somebody gets into somebody that's one of the things again when they run in a green flag for a long stretch of time you just don't see this sort of thing but when you bunch them up they're going to wreck Hitner's car going out on the rollback up in turn two that's the 82 car they're putting Mark Bonds number 12 on a rollback here on the main straightaway right now safety crews are out everybody's okay the moisture being cleaned up as is the debris but we've got a red flag at Phoenix International Raceway we'll be back with more of the Featherlight Southwest Tour of NASCAR in a moment Mike. Okay, so we don't need anybody, right? Are we gonna sit out until okay. we're? Okay. Uh, yeah. Are we gonna <laughs> sit out until we go green again, or are we? Gonna Have we gotten a shot Have you of ever the? Heard Randy? Of the impact <laughs> on the wall yet? Right before it hit the camera. Oh yeah, I mean it was. Come on, I'll, I'll get Corky to shoot it. You got to see this. <laughs> That's it. You can lead right to the camera. I tell you, Randy's funniest I ever heard him. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I'll get Corky to shoot it. What was that? Hey, what shoot the cars leaving on the back stretch. Or look at everybody get bailing out of here, <laughs> the Winston Cup teams. <laughs> look at them bailing out. Oh, my. Trucks.
<laughs> oh man. Did a radio show with Luke Roy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing here. I saw him this morning. Like for beacon in the night. Trolling for work. Uh -oh. The number seven is in. Eaton. Ron Eaton. Ron Eaton. Giving up valuable track. Really? Position. Really? I don't know where he started third. He might have run over a piece of changing, fiber glass. Yeah. Yeah. Changing back. Uh, what about uh, him? What is he doing? Passing everybody. Did he lose another lap? He's uh, all stopped. Let's see where he is here. He's not in our first 20. Oh, yeah, he's 10. He's back on the lead lap. Oh, just going by some cars and passing by. I thought they couldn't do that. Oh, yeah. What? There you go. There. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. No comment. Really? Mm -mm, not me. I'm not going there. That's what he knew. <laughs> I don't care. I'm still not going <laughs> there. Woo. That's for the new R-rated racing channel that's <laughs> coming soon. Oh, you didn't. Did you think I thought that was real? Wow. Rodman. Uh -huh. Reed. No. No. <laughs> no. Somebody lost a position there. Yeah. Yeah. It is. They ought to be counting. Yeah, yeah, God, God please. Be here till Tuesday. I got a, I got a speaking engagement tonight. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> That's when he grabs his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Are you a horn player in an earlier life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trumpet. <laughs> oh, good. They're putting down some sand, guys, on the front straightaway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll help things, won't it? Oh, great. Yeah, most of that natural stuff has already blown away. Yeah. <laughs> Green and yellow. So does this mean they start scoring again? Thank God. Yes, they're scoring. The green is out with the yellow. 79. They can hear us, I think. Is it? <coughs> There's the car that started it. See? See yep. the right door? Yep. Whoa. That's Bubba's. That's Bubba's. Uh, oh, he's in, he's in, he's like the rabbit at Pocono. Third, he's in third. Great shot. Now, where is that located? This could be debris on the speedway. Back, back straight away. Jacques Debris. Hmm. Let it be out of there now. Look at this. Getting in the groove. <laughs> that is a camera. What? <laughs> Please get the... He's ready to leave port. Oh, nice. Oh. Yes. Bizarre. Look at that. Look at that. Hey. This drawer and see what an electrical punch is. <laughs> so what's the deal with the fire downtown? In our hotel? Yep. Wow. God. Man, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Pam. Good, Pam. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, my
my favorite shirts in the hotel. I hope it don't burn. <laughs> Did you hear going that? He said street. his favorite shirt was in that <laughs> hotel. <laughs> my favorite shirts there, man. Don't let that place burn down. I feel the same way. I just bought it. Uh, no, no, I mean my favorite shirt's in that bar. Oh. <laughs> Pinned to the wall, no doubt. Eh? The dollar bill stuff. Yeah, there. it's part of it's part of the act tonight, man. <laughs> and, and I was gonna go, and now you tell me the place is burned down. Uh oh. Oh golly. Oh, it ought, it ought to be easy. Yeah, yeah, it ought to be easy. Old bookstore next to the hotel. It ought to be that's easy to contain. Yeah. It's full of paper. With this wind like this, yeah. Sure. Fan the flames. <laughs> Sean Monroe back in the pits. They go to the right side. They start working. We can start a fire in the grandstand and, and yeah. uh, flame the fans. We didn't uh, start the fire. Uh huh. Uh huh. Surfer dude is having lots of problems. I know. Yeah, he needs yeah. some wax, no doubt. They're He's cutting away. He's wiped out the whole left front. <laughs> They're working on the right front. Actually, the toe end's out. Actually, the toe end is way out. Well, if it's toe, if it's towed in, why is it called out? Just That's right. Hanging ten, dude. Oh, I like that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> towed in, it's towed toe out. Up. Oh man, it's toe up. <laughs> hurry, 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 uh -oh. hurry. What is that boiler on the front there? What's the what? He's got a piece sticking straight up. <laughs> Go ring. How many? Never mind. How many more? Yeah, they're waving, waving the yellow vociferously. Oh. Three laps. That's a good shot. Cut away the bar. The, uh, that's, the door, that's the door bar. Yep. They're cutting off. Out. Cutting out. We're not going green yet. That gives Sean Monroe some more, time, more time to more remove time. the nose. I'd take the whole thing off. Playing with this piece and get it off. <laughs> yeah. That'll make it a lot safer. Now, will they let him go back out like that, or will they have to, have to slap somebody? Some sheet metal no, he can go with the exposed bar. Do we want to get a word with Horn today? Yeah. Now they're showing the green and yellow again. Well, past winner Ron Hornaday said. What is this guy doing in the grandstand doing a yellow flag on the top? He's lost his ever. Whoa. Really? Keep him away. <laughs> he's, he's dressed like a NASCAR official. I'm telling you, if he's near, yeah, the, if oh, he's, he's got near, a whole set of flags in front of him. Hey, if he's near no, us, okay keep him down. To do it, but not for an adult. These he's people from, make Martha's, me nervous. Like Martha this. says he's from Bakersfield, and he did the same thing at Bakersfield. All oh, day. come on. <laughs> <laughs> need to take up a collection and buy this guy a life. He's given one to go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour on the Speedway. Craig Rodman, your restart leader, into the pits quickly before we go back to green. Actually, they started scoring a few laps ago. Still under caution for that big wreck coming out of turn four, but 83 miles are now complete, and Craig Rodman will have the restart lead to show you the top 20, the way they're running right now. Michael Alsop, buddy, we watched him lead early here. He'll restart 12th. He's not in bad shape at all. Well, got a lap down. 
uh, fought very hard to uh, get his lap back, and now he's right back up in 12th spot in pretty good uh, track position. A lot of cars suffered heavily damaged in that pileup just a few moments ago. This is Bob Lyons, number 44. They had to put the door bars together again on the right-hand side of the car. Lyons still strapped into the machine. They've got a lot of work to do. Bob Lyon, fifth in points, coming into today's final event of the 1986 Southwest Tour season, hoping to get him back in there for a few more laps. Green is back out. We're racing once again. Mark Reed leads him to the stripe. Craig Rodman had made that stop, so that put him behind in terms of track position, so Reed takes him to the green flag. Chris Rodman, the 80, the 96 series champion, running in second spot now, and Doug McCowan is up to third. Well, I, I really think that McCowan uh, worked on his car and got it really handling good. He's running in third spot. Uh, just a little bit ago, he was pushing in the middle part of the corner and losing a lot of valuable time in the corner, so he looks to be up to speed now. John Walsh in the 28, ducking low there. That's the white cars that come up out of the main straightaway. McCowan is third. Walsh in the 28, running fourth. Got a lap car right in front of him there. Trying to keep pace, get back on the lead lap. 28, Walsh running in the number Whoa. four position. Excuse me, Walsh is all out of shape there in the 28 car. I watched him uh, just on the restart there, and I was hoping it was cold tires, but uh, just staying with him, that car is extremely loose in the corner. Leaders work through three and four and up onto the main straightaway, and here's Scott Hansen in the 53. He restarted back in ninth spot. He's picked up a couple of positions here in the early going, so Hansen, the defending race winner. In fact, he's won two of these 300-kilometer events that wrap up the Southwest Tour season in the last couple of years, so Hansen running nicely now as we move toward the second half of this race. Hansen barely escaped in that big pileup a few moments ago during the red flag period. Randy Pemberton had a chance to walk up and talk to Scott Hansen, find out how he made it through the pileup. Scott Hansen sitting here. You just barely missed that wreck. Could you tell us about it? Well, I tell you, you know, they really had a heck of a wreck up there. There was three, four of them climbing the walls. And, you know, I seen it coming. I started waving and slowing down. And I had to actually accelerate into it a little bit because the guys were coming from behind. And, I don't think we got a scratch anywhere. I think we should be in good shape. What about the conditions out there? Wind pushing you down the back stretch pretty good? It is. You know, we picked up 200 RPM since we practiced. Uh, the biggest problem is the front stretch. It's trying to tear the hood and fenders off. But uh, hopefully it'll settle down a little bit and we'll get going here. Hey, that's Scott St. Hansen, last year's winner. Hansen trying to get going on the inside. Buddy, one thing I've noticed, not too many guys are willing to try the high side here. I don't think there is a high side right now with the wind and the dust that's on the racetrack. And not only that, they put some oil dry down because of the wreck on the front straightaway, adding to the uh, outside line of being really dirty right now. So yeah, I don't think you'd want to get out of the groove at all. Leaders working up onto the main straightaway, coming out of four as we keep an eye on Scott Hansen. Up to six now in that 53 automobile. John Pox in the 66, the blue car on the outside, the dark blue machine. He's a lap down being shown in 15th spot. Look back a little further in the pack. Pox there trying to hold off the 79. Gary Smith. Now Smith on the move. He led an awful lot of this race early on. Smith is up to eight. Made a bunch of pit stops to get going again. He did, he did that, but uh, he has the fresh, I guess, the best uh, left side tire to anybody out there right now, and he's really making it work. You can see he's passing it well in the corner. Hansen in the 53, making the pass on Doug McCowan. So Hansen is up to fifth now. And he is rolling the 35 car, running in fourth spot directly in front of Kevin Richards from Spokane, Washington. He's worked his way up into that lead group. He had not been shown among the leaders yet this afternoon, but he is on the move. McCowan in the 34 is sixth. Smith in the 79 is seventh as they race for position. Up in turn three, Pox back there in the 66. Back a lap down, so he's back in about 16th position. Meantime, out of the main straightaway, the 35 of Richards, Hansen in the 53. This is a battle for fourth spot now as they work into turn one. Hansen willing to go up a little higher on the racetrack and try to work on Mark Richards. What he did, he went in the corner and kind of looked like he was going up high and then cut back down in the center part of the corner there, trying to, I guess, make him look in the mirror and maybe get offline just a little bit. Richards still holding off Hansen as they work out of turn four. Gary Smith is right behind him in seventh spot. Now Hansen takes a peek down low on Richards in the 35. A couple of white machines here. Racing down the main straightaway. Hansen, the ASA star in his Jerry Gunderman car. Trying to stick close to Richards and maybe move around and pick up fourth spot as they work up through turn two right now. Field getting the cross flags to indicate halfway. So we've run 93 miles here this afternoon of the 186 that will make up the 300 kilometer show. 
NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour to close the 1996 season. That is a great battle for fourth spot. Richards and Hanson up onto the main straightaway once again. Gary Smith, buddy, has been unable to get very close and become a part of that. Smith doesn't seem to be as strong as he was earlier. Well, just keep an eye on him because I, I really think uh, his car is good on long runs. You see him coming up now. He's closed in within two car lengths of Hanson. Looks to be uh, really good in the corners. I think he's going to be a factor. Kevin Richards in the 35 holds on to fourth. Scott Hansen in the 53 is fifth. Now Gary Smith in the 79 indeed starts to reel in those two cars. So we may well have a three way battle for the fourth spot here in just a moment. Now Hansen takes a look inside down into one, but can't get the job done. Richards able to drive it in a little deeper, it looks like, as they work into turn one. Now Smith starts to move off the second quarter. We've got trouble over in that part of the racetrack. It looks like it might be. The four car involved over there. We'll take a look and see who that was. One car out of shape. We stay green, though. No caution indeed. Everybody stays straight. That's the eight. Actually, Ron Peterson from San Bernardino, California, who got down low, kicked up a lot of dust down through turns one and two. So we watched Doug McCown work by. About it out of turn four. 37 is Keith Spangler. Let's go back and show you what happened just a moment ago to the eight automobile. Ron Peterson's car down in turn one and two. Let's see what happened here, buddy. You see Peterson there. He goes in, makes contact with McCowan as they go down in the corner. He's really battling this car. A great job of control there. Had he went back up in the racetrack, you can see he would have got all these cars that you see in the frame. Nice job to keep it down low and stay out of trouble indeed as we look back up toward turn three and four right now. Some good battling on the racetrack going on. Everybody chasing Mark Reed in the 73, who's your leader. This is a battle for position a little further back. We check back in on the battle for fourth spot. The 35 is Kevin Richards. Scott Hansen trying to hold off Gary Smith for fifth spot. Glenn Jarrett, what do you two, think? Two, two. And the two car is on pit road as well. You see Craig Rodman's deuce. He had led earlier. He's down on pit road. This battle for fourth is a strong one. Let's go back to Glenn Jarrett. Now he just came in, the, the, the little bit of smoke came out of the car, they got it back, uh, jacked up on the back end, you can see, I think he may have a rear gearing problem. There was a lot of smoke coming from the rear end of the car, and it was running when he came back, uh, when he came by me, but uh, I don't think he's going to be able to get back out there. It looks like a gearing problem. Craig Rodman had led a lot of this show earlier. He was up in the lead group, but he had fallen back after the last round of pit stops to 12th. Now this battle for fourth. Hanson to the inside. He's going to give up ground to Smith. You see Hanson just pull over and let him go. He looked in the mirror, and Smith had been coming so fast on him. He said, I'm not going to hold this guy up. He moved over. You know what? Later on in the race, if it's a, a turn, a table turn, he'll remember that and get out of the way and let him go. Gary Smith with a nice move there to move into fourth spot. That's the red number 79 car. One of Ron Eaton's machines that that team rented for this weekend here. And now he's got the 35 of Kevin Richards in his sights. Richards remains fourth. Smith is fifth. Hanson back to sixth now as they race down towards turn one. Gary Smith from Vancouver, British Columbia, lapping by one of the cars involved in that earlier pile up there. Looks like the 67 of Doyle Olson. I'm just looking at Smith's car on the very front. He has a nick right in the middle part of the front spoiler there, and I think it's hurting the aerodynamics on that car. Maybe he's making it push out just a little bit. You see, uh, he's not able to hold the low line, but he's getting the job done on the outside, so apparently it's not hurting him as much as I thought it might be. So Gary Smith moves around the 35 of Richards to take over for The series champion on pit road with problems. Here's Randy. Well, they believe it may be a broken rear end. Uh, yes, it looks like from the looks on the guys' faces, they could very well be done for the day. Chris Rodman has already been uh, crowned, should we say, the 1996 Southwest Federlight Tour champion. 17 starts coming coming into this race two victories 13 top fives 13 top tens uh they're still going to work on this thing go ahead and put it up on jack stands but uh he won't go to victory lane here today big irony both roudman's out of the action at least for the moment both with rear end problems so two good cars in the series on pit road on track we've got a good battle this is for seventh jim inglebright in the 50 michael alsop in the 61 battling for seventh spot right now and ron eaton in the seventh car he's back in ninth so we've got three together on the backstretch this is a fight for seventh and a good one buddy Bates. yes and i'm watching eaton there his car is able to stay really low in the corners he seems to have a good good running car through the corners but look at all that car go down the straightaway it's really good 
Eaton to the inside of Alsop, and he'll gather up the spot going down into turn one. So Ron Eaton give him eighth position now. As he moves by Michael Alsop, 61. Jim Englebright, meantime, with the 50. Holds on to seventh, and he rolls away at a couple of car lengths over Eaton. Up in front of him, he's got some cars to work on. Well, that guy, that's Sean Monroe's machine with that heavy front end damage. Monroe, one of the cars, caught up in that big main straightaway tumble a short time ago that brought out the red flag here at Phoenix today. Englebright in the 50, the green car. Also in the 61 behind him in eighth spot. Englebright is seventh. Also is eighth. Also all alone. Remember, he was the pole sitter here today. Also up onto the back straightaway with 83 miles to go. Let's show you some trouble down in turn one here. Oh, he's up in that dust that I was talking about. You can see the car get sideways there. I tell you what, that was real serious there. It didn't look like much on the camera there, but the car was all the way sideways. Had he been on radial tires, he would have had a lot more work to, to do there. <laughs> that was Ron Peterson again in the eight. He's the same driver who went that, down low and out of the dirt a moment ago. Well, he, <laughs> I was just looking at him as he was coming through the corner there. He's still a little bit loose even down in the preferred line, but uh, wow, this is good racing. Good battle here. The 21 automobile is Ken Peterson. He's 14th. The 22 car being driven by Bill Lawrence. He's 15th. And we check back in with the Bill Englebright and Ron Eaton battle. This is for sixth now. Englebright is sixth. Eaton in the seven is seventh. He wants to make a change on that down into turn one. Eaton looks low on Englebright as they work toward the backstroke. When you see Englebright taking a little wider line, he gets a little quicker jump off the corner, but I, I really don't believe he's going to be able to hold Eaton off because he's able to run lower into the corner. Eaton makes the pass down in turn three, so give Ron Eaton a spot. He moves up to sixth, getting by Jim Englebright. Ron Eaton is moving toward the front of the pack. Let's go back to pit road, Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, the work continues on Craig Rodman's car, and I told you I thought they had a rear gearing problem. They did. These are the rear spur gears that came out of the car. He runs what's called a quick change rear end simply because you can change these spur gears so quickly and change the ratio on the rear end. You can see this drive gear here is completely stripped off around. It started stripping the bigger gear. The car just simply quits pulling when that happens. They are putting new gears in it. They're just about completed right now. This is very hot stuff. In fact, I burned my finger pretty good on this thing. So uh, <laughs> that ain't funny. Quit laughing at me. It hurts. Now, you ought to know better than to stick your hand down in there on something like that, Glenn. I was just going to say, Glenn's been around <laughs> racing his whole life. I know he knows better than to touch a, a quick change rear end like that. But those gears there, though, the bad part is, even though it took all the teeth off of it, that metal went somewhere, and it's down in that housing somewhere. That could be a problem indeed. Meantime, we check in with your leader, Mark Reed, in the 73, who's done very, very nicely here in the last 40 laps. Reed's got a good lead. No, nine seconds, let's call it over the 79 automobile being driven by Gary Smith, who is second. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway, the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. It's season finale for 1996. Rick Benjamin, Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, and Randy Pemberton on pit road today for us on TNN Motorsports. And Mark Reed, buddy, he has stretched out the lead quite a bit now over the second place driver. That's to be the 28th car right now. John Walsh has moved into second spot. You know, we talked about this earlier. Uh, Reed wasn't really in contention until he made his first stop. He did a little bit of uh, work on the car, and now that, that car looks to be the fastest thing out there. But... Uh, he also has great track position and uh, does not have to work his way through a lot of lap traffic right now. He works down to the turn three. He's turned in a nice drive here this afternoon. He lined up third on the day, dropped back at the early going. Has come on to lead and lead by a big margin here in the last several laps as Reed goes down into turn one. Englebright and Tom Hubert battling for eighth spot. Jim Englebright was up in sixth a moment ago in that green number 50. He's dropped back to eighth now. He's trying to get around Herbert, Herbert and move into seventh spot. Herbert in the eighth car is uh, running right the four car. Has had some problems here today from time to time. And Englebright blows right by him down into turn one. So move Englebright up on the board into eighth spot right now. Michael Alsop is the next car ahead in line. And also who led many laps early in the going. He's come back to run nicely too and very strongly here in the middle portions of this race. We've got about 70 miles to go here this afternoon. We're going 300 kilometers today at Phoenix. What color is that race car of Engelbright? Looks green to me. <laughs> I'm telling you it's green. Now you and I are old enough to remember when green cars were a no-no. Yeah, but you know what? All of them get green money for racing. <laughs> they don't 
They don't complain about that, and you can see it has nothing to do with the way the car runs. Eagle Bright scored in eighth spot, the four car. Tom Hubert right behind him there. Eagle Bright dispatched Hubert a moment ago and is running in clean traffic. He's got about an eighth of a racetrack in front of him with no cars there. And we've got trouble on the racetrack. A couple of cars go around. The 03 automobile, Jim Pettit, one of the cars is spun up in turn two. Two or three cars involved up there. Looks like the 28 was involved as well. John Walsh there caught up in that. And we are under caution on lap 115 for the fourth time this afternoon. One car laying down huge smoke down the back stretch here. That is Walsh's number 28. So the yellow is back out at Phoenix International Raceway. Everybody chasing Mark Reed. We're going to show you again what happened up in turn two just a moment ago. Buddy, how'd this get started? Wow, Peterson just got down in there so hard and got into the back of uh, Ken Peterson there with the 21 car, and boy, I mean, it just triggered a huge wreck there. Ron Peterson in the eighth. That's the third time he has been in trouble in that part of the racetrack here this afternoon. Ken Peterson in the 21. Let's take another look. You can tell at that part of the corner, you don't really have a whole bunch of time to react. And the guy on the top side, he didn't hit anybody. He just did a lot of spinning there. Jim Pettit in the 03 going by. He's from Prudale, California. He was able to spin the car and stay out of trouble, keep it off the wall. But the 28 of John Walsh with some serious damage to that automobile. So he is down on pit road. Sean Monroe was caught up in it again as well. And Monroe brings his car slowly onto pit road. Got another look or two at this for you this afternoon. This is turn one and two here at Phoenix International Raceway. And you see the contact between the two Petersons, the 8 and the 21. The 37 just sneaking by Keith Spangler, who's been up in the lead group. He was able to make a nice move a on the great, outside. Uh, that was a really great job by Jim Pettit to not hit somebody. I've, uh, he just went everywhere. You can see him going to yeah. the outside. He spins there. He, if he'd have locked the brakes up, he'd have hit 21, but he just was uh, very lucky to get turned around there. Now, when you make a hard right in one of these cars, especially in the middle of the corner, that's a much tougher move than a lot of folks would realize because of the way these cars are set up weight-wise. Oh, man, I tell you what, you don't turn hard right with these cars with the uh, left side percentage you have. When you turn back to the right, you're going to spin. It's just a matter of how, how long it takes. Amazing he kept that car off the wall. I, I thought surely he was going to drill the concrete hard with that automobile, but Pettit does a nice job in the 03 and gets it straightened out. So we're back under caution, 115 of 186 laps on the board here this afternoon. And Mark Reed is going to be the restart leader if he stays out. Now, we ought to be in the window, I would think, for a pit stop that would take you to the end on tires. We were hearing 60, maybe 70 miles on a set of tires. Pit road opens, and we see... At least one car, that is the 79 of Smith coming on, the 73 of Reed, and the 37 of Keith Spangler coming on to pit road as well. Your race leader, Mark Reed, in the 73. Randy Pemberton is there to watch him bring that car to a stop. Randy. Well, we're waiting to see exactly what they're going to do. It appears they're going to go to the left side. It's going to be a left side tire change. That's the way that they're going to do it here. They might want to try and take on lefts and stop one more time and get their best set of rights on for the final uh, onslaught for the checkered flag here. But it's left side tires for the 73 car. Glenn Jarrett, what's up? Your, well, Gary Smith Pembroke. came in, Randy, and uh, he went to the right side. Remember, they had already changed the left side. This is the second time they've changed rights. But crew chief Kelly Tanner told me that this should be their last stop. They wanted to get another set of right sides on. They feel like they're in great shape now. He came a long way back through that field, guys, to get up to second place. I tell you, I think he's got the best car out there right now. He drove by Scott Hansen and pulled away. You don't do that very often to Hansen here at Phoenix. Gary Smith looks to be in good shape for the final run. Well, we watch Mark Reed. He got his service work done quickly, and he'll come back up onto the speedway behind the pace truck. Many more cars will be taking this opportunity to come on to pit road, get gas and tires for one more shot. Yeah, this is all the cars that are a lap down coming down pit road right now. And uh, when this sorts out and everybody makes their stops, you'll be able to tell who is really in good shape uh, and track position when they start back to the run to the end. Pit work continuing here under caution. We had a tangle up in turn two just a moment ago. The two Petersons, Ron in the eight and Ken Peterson with a D in the 21 had gotten together. There's Michael Walsh of the pole sitter today in the 61 car. And he's going to be shown at the head of the pack, I believe, when we get ready to restart. And we mentioned that he had been an early 
stopper this afternoon. He stopped before the first caution, so he's not on the same pit stop sequence as everybody else, and that could work to his advantage. As we watch the two of Craig Rodman, they finally got the rear end gear problem taken care of in that car. Craig Rodman will come back on the speedway as well. Still under caution at Phoenix. Michael Alsop in the 61. There's some of the damage from one of the cars involved here a few moments ago. We'll be back at Phoenix in a moment. Okay, is that McCowan, Alsop, uh, Rodman? Yeah. Now, there's, this is showing that McCowan must not be on the lead lap. How could he okay. not be? I don't know how he couldn't be either. That can't be. What do you, do you have 34 on the lead lap? Martha says he's not on the lead lap. I don't know how he couldn't be. He's been Alsop? up fighting for the lead That's all day. Right. Should, we, should we go to Alsop's pit and talk strategy with those guys? Okay. You got all stop leading. Yeah, he's he's shown at the top of the board. Okay. Less than 70 miles to go at Phoenix International Raceway. We're here for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour this afternoon. And Michael Alsop will have the restart lead, it looks like, Buddy Baker. This pit strategy may have worked perfectly for him. Well, the whole thing, he's in the lead right now, but with this single file restart. A lot of good race cars are up front again, and uh, uh, Glenn says the uh, 79 right now, as far as he's concerned, Gary Smith might be the toughest guy out yeah. there, and he's right behind him. Smith has certainly been stout all day. Oh, he has, and uh, you know he's got good track position on this restart also. Scott Hansen will be right in the mix as well. Hansen being shown second right now, ready to go green. Doug McCowan will lead him to the stripe. We don't have McCowan on the lead lap. The green is back out to begin lap 119. And we've got less than 90 miles to go here this afternoon. McCown takes him down into turn one. He was nicely and cleanly through there. McCowan with also right behind him in the 61. Also is shown as the race leader. So McCowan not on the lead lap at the moment. He's shown two laps down in the 34 car. The leader is also in the 61. Right behind him, Hanson in the 53 is back there with Gary Smith. We've got a couple of lap cars in the midst of things there. There's the battle between Hanson, who's running second, and Smith in the 79, who's third. Buddy, I think this will tell a lot about how strong Smith is. Well, you can see right there, Hanson is uh, not able to hold that low line through the middle part of the corner there. Looks to me like Smith's car may be just a little bit better in the center part of the corner. But uh, one thing about Scott Hanson, he is excellent at really preserving his tires, so he may be doing that right now, not trying to get them hot. And uh, he may be running that wide groove, not to lean on the tires too much. That's the battle for second spot. ASA standout Scott Hansen in the 53. Gary Smith, from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, the 79 car. Running second and third right now behind Michael Olson. 73 of Mark Reed, who was leading up to the last caution. He's back and forth. Then we have Kevin Richards in the 35. He's running fifth right now. This is the battle for second. They come out of turn four once again, and Smith takes a look to the low side. Won't have enough to get by him this time either. Hanson able to hang on to second spot. Well, you can see that Scott Hanson has a very good race car down the straightaway, and uh, he is a, a master at really setting his car up and getting it good for the last runs here. He's not really giving up anything to Smith right now. This is the battle for six. Tom Hubert in the four. Ron Eaton in the seven car running eighth. Jim Inglebright in the middle of the sandwich in the green 50. He's seventh trying to get by Hubert for sixth position. Hubert has really had a good run here this afternoon. A driver you don't hear too much from normally, but he qualified well and has been right up in there all afternoon. Here's Eaton with Inglebright trying to move by Hubert to take over the position. Going for sixth. And Inglebright gets by. That drops Hubert back a spot. And Brian Germoni's back in there too. Germoni's shown ninth in the five. So that's a battle for position with four drivers involved. Meantime, Gary Smith on the outside going around Scott Hansen up in turn three. So Smith moves by and takes over second spot now. He's got a long way to go to get up to Michael Alsop, but he is back in second spot. And now Ron Eaton and Hubert, and Hubert wiggles again coming out of turn four. I think Hubert may have hit the outside wall just a little bit there coming out of turn four. He really zigzagged pretty hard there. Craig Rodman in the two got out of shape too as we came back around. Our camera looking ahead at the four car, but you saw Rodman just get a little bit sideways coming through turns one and two. He's just back on the track after fixing a rear end problem. Problem in that car. He was out for many laps. Ran up front earlier in the afternoon here. There's Ingle Bright running sixth in the 50. Eaton in the seven is sixth. Germoni then in the four car. 
Kubert back in ninth spot right now. So battle for position. Six, seventh, eighth, and ninth on the speedway right now with Engelbright heading this little group of cars that have been working on each other for quite some time. You know, Gary Smith has got brand new right side tires on that car, so he's really putting it to work right now. And I think he may have an advantage on the lead car now as far as catching him. He's, he looks like he's running them down pretty easily. Brian Giamone, meantime, and Tom Hubert as they battle for eighth spot. Hubert gets around him. Ron Eaton in the seventh car bringing his machine onto pit road. So this could end his chances here this afternoon. Hubert, meantime, on the high side, goes back around to reclaim that position. He is seventh. Giamone back to eighth as we see Eaton bring the number seven machine onto pit road. And this, the battle. Up front for third spot. Scott Hansen is running third. The 73 of Mark Reed is running fourth on the main straightaway. Quickly to Glenn Jarrett on pit road. What's wrong with Ron Eaton's car? Well, I'm not certain, Rick, but when he came by me and my vantage point, the engine was not running, and there is a stream of fluid coming out from underneath it. So whatever the problem is, I feel sure that it's terminal. Probably so at this stage of the afternoon. 127 miles into the books. Less than 60 to go here this afternoon. As we watch the strong cars at the head of the show right now, Scott Hansen being shown in third spot down to the main straightaway in the 53 car. Chris Rodman in the 93 back on the racetrack. 79 of Smith is second. Scott Hansen, Randy Pemberton, he's run well today, but he doesn't seem to have enough for Smith. What's the situation down there? Well, that's the way it appears right now, Rick, but uh, he could be holding back just a little bit. Uh, prior to the interview that I had with him in halftime there, or during the red flag situation, he said he rode into the racetrack with Dick Trickle today. He said, Dick, what is the strategy to win this thing? Because I happen to win it getting lucky last year by stopping one less time than everybody is. Everybody else. And uh, Dick said, you've got to take on rights, then lefts, then rights one more time and save your last set of rights and don't don't run them into the ground until the last few laps. So that could be very well what we're seeing from Scott Hansen right now. We still have several laps to go, so he might be just nursing those right side tires. Well, Randy knows what he's talking about. Dick Trickle's won this event twice already, so uh, who better to ask than the guy that's already won twice? Certainly a guy with plenty of expertise in these type cars, too. These are very, very similar to NASCAR Slim Jim All Pro machines and to ASA cars. We're watching Scott Hansen run his ASA ride right here in the 53. We watch Gary Smith in the 79. He is second. Hansen there is third. Chris Rodman in the 93, the series champion. He claimed that title earlier today by just taking the green flag of that machine. Missed a bunch of laps a short time ago with rear end problems, but they got it fixed, got him back up onto the racetrack. Put the cars onto the back stretch. Very strong machines right there. The leaders are on the main straightaway right now. He watch this battle for position a little bit further back in the pack. Cars working out three, three, and four. This group of cars has been together now for several laps. The eight of Ron Peterson. He's had problems several times as we've documented up in one and two. This has been a part of the racetrack he has not enjoyed this afternoon. John Cox in the 66 also in that group of cars. Cox being shown up in ninth now. He's only two laps down. He got one of his laps back a moment ago. So John Cox moves into the top ten. At the moment we're being shown that there are only five cars on the lead lap as the field works around through in the late stages of the going here. 300 kilometers this afternoon for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour cars. They wrap up their 1996 campaign. 18 races, second time they've been here this year. They ran 50 miles back in February part of the Copper Classic that you saw here on TNN Motorsports. Leaders, meantime, work down the backstretch toward turn three and then down toward turn one. We see Doug McCown there in the 34 in that group of cars. And there's also been the 61 still showing the way, buddy. You know, it's a shame that McCowan got a lap down because you can see that he's just as fast as Allstop. Uh, Allstop hadn't gained not even a car length since they dropped the green, and he's much in the race. If he could get a caution, I think that car is as fast as anything out there. Leader, meantime, out of turn four. Michael Allsup from Bakersfield, California. And that 61 automobile doing a great job. Qualified on the pole. Glenn told us earlier his fourth start on the Phoenix Mile. This is not an easy racetrack to come to and be strong at if you're a young driver just learning. And he has certainly put on a great run here today. This, meantime, is the battle for second. Gary Smith in the 79 has opened up a good bit of racetrack now on Scott Hansen. And Derek Cope takes a look from down on pit road. He's taking a look from Gary Smith's pit and lending a little moral support. Driver who ran in the Pacific Northwest in the early stages of his career. Well, I tell you, he better help him in a hurry because uh, 
Gary Smith right now is about four and a half seconds back of Alsop, and uh, right now with the uh, advantage of having uh, McCowan out front, he can actually draft down the straightaway on the McCowan car, so uh, right now he, he better close him down if he plans to be in this thing at the end. Closing up on 50 miles to go as we watch the second place machine, the 79 of Gary Smith. It's been out of pit road, Glenn Jarrett. Well, I just asked Kelly Tanner, Rick, if, uh, if there was a problem on the car, whether he was just saving it to the end. He gave me that sly little grin that only crew chiefs own. Only that possessed. <laughs> and said, we're just cooling it to the end. So he's saving what he's got. Also running his car pretty doggone hard right now to not have anybody pressuring him. So he may not have anything left at the end. Let's go to Randy. Well, uh, we've caught up with Ron Eaton. Uh, you climbed from your car. You had a heck of a run going there, sir. Yeah, we were running real good, but thing is, is uh, we had a flat tire in the rear end league. We got it fixed and got back up front, and then something broke in the motor. What about the 79 car? I believe you rented the wrong one. Well, the 79 car, I drove last or two weeks ago and won with it, and he wanted to rent it right after the race, so I let him have it, and we brought this car here, and it's running just as good. They're both identical cars. But I hope Gary wins the race. But Gary's a good driver. We've got trouble up in turn three. A big crash. A couple of cars spin. One car backs into the wall and sheds much of its bodywork at the time. So we've got caution on the speedway once again. See the driver in there. He looks like he's okay, but fiberglass and sheet metal everywhere. That may be the 44 of Bob Lyon. Lyon had gotten mixed up in that wreck down on the main straightaway earlier that took out our speed camera. And they lost some of the bodywork off it at that point. There's the roof of Lyons' car. That was a violent hit. It was that, but if you want to look at something, the fuel cell and all in that car is still intact. That's the important part. A few years ago, when you had a metal tank, that would have been a huge fire. You can see everything is pulled loose. Quarter panel's gone where they put the gas in. That's the filler neck just halfway down the uh, where, where you used to have a quarter panel. There's a little uh, drip there, but uh, a long time ago, that would have been a huge fire. Bob Lyon drops the steering wheel off the column there. He hasn't dropped the window netting yet, but he is moving around inside the car. The safety crew there to talk to him. We need to get him out of that car pretty quickly. Let's show you again. This is down the backstretch into turn three. And Lyon on the inside in the yellow car there. A couple of cars close to him, and they get pushed together. Okay, on the outside there, the car that was trying to get an angle into the corner touched the white car and really moved him in the lines there. It was Mark Reed in 73 that come down. And uh, Lyon had absolutely nothing to do, but a lot of times on the racetrack, you don't have to have anything to do with the wreck. It just happens like that. So the 44, Bob Lyon, his second trip into the wall today. Lyon jumps out of the car. He's fine. That is good news indeed. Hard lick up in turn three. Caution again at Phoenix. 139 laps complete. Michael Ossoff, your leader. We'll be right back. Boy, I tell you what, you oh, guys should have been able buddy, to see buddy, that. Yeah. Buddy, hang on one sec. In, in Gary Smith's pit, I just found this out. Duh. Uh, <laughs> you remember Roy, Roy Smith? Yeah. This, yeah. Gary is his son. Oh, really? my. Yeah, Roy's in the pit here. I'm right on top of things, man. Talk to him. <laughs> Talk to him. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, man. But this is Roy in the red cap here in the white T-shirt in front of the car. Are all the leaders coming in this time? Yeah. All stop didn't stop, did he? All subs in. Yeah, okay. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway. Rick Benjamin and Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, and Randy Pemberton on pit road. Caution again, and pit stops taking place. Glenn Jarrett. And Gary Smith came back in, guys. We didn't really expect him, but they got together. Gary Cope, as we showed you, was down here, talked it over with his old crew chief, uh, Jackie Johnson, who works as co-crew chief on this field. And they all decided to bring him back in, put on that last set of fresh right side tires that they had. Uh, uh, Michael Ossip was getting away from them just a little bit. And so they decided to uh, gamble and go with the best. Also, we want to point out at this time that Gary Smith is the son of Roy Smith, who is a former Winston West champion, won, I guess, about 10 million races out in Winston West <laughs> races, anybody. At but least. this is Roy Smith's, uh, Roy Smith's son, Gary Smith. Let's go down to Randy Pemberton. Well, Michael Allslip also came in, and uh, this is very unique strategy. I've seen it a couple of times before in any form of stock car racing. They went ahead and took on rear tires, two rears. He was down in the way. Buddy Baker, you think that might be a winning strategy for Michael Allsup? Well, apparently he was running a little bit loose, and he needed better forward bite, or the back of the car was uncontrollable to the point that it was aggravating to him, and two new tires on the rear of the front was working good, so he's working on the back to get more forward bite and also keep it from sliding in the front. 
Caution again here at Phoenix. Bob Lyon taking it to the outside wall hard up in turn three. He's okay. Took most of the body work off the car in that hard crash. Now Mark Reed in the 73 who's been running up front all afternoon. Reed is fourth at the moment. He comes down onto pit road. Looks like they're going to do right side tires and add some fuel to the 73 machine. Rest of the field coming in as well. Probably the final pit stop. We've got 45 miles to go when we go back to green. Well, and the one thing that we have to remember, McCowan, yeah. he was he was in front and he was pulling away from also as he was uh, leading the race there. And I think he's going to be a contender if he's back in the lead lap, or, or did he lose more laps than that a while ago? He, they're showing him two laps down at this point, so he needs another break, or maybe he can gain one here, depending on how the pit stop falls for McCowan. We'll see what happens. The pace truck is out on the speedway. It's picked up Sean Monroe at the moment. We take a look at Gary Smith in the 79, Michael Alsop in the 61. Now, they were reversed on the track when we went to caution. Alsop was the leader. Smith was running second about three and a half seconds behind. Smith's been able to take over on the pit stop shuffle. Let's go back to Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, I told you that Roy Smith is the father of Gary Smith. And, Roy, uh, you're a legend in Winston West Racing. Fun to watch your son run up front. Oh, yeah, I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, we had a bit of a frustrating year, and uh, we come down here, you know, and we owed our sponsor a good run here, and uh, we had to make a few changes to get to where we are. But uh, I think that uh, he's going to put on a good show for him today, and I think we got a good shot at being in the winner's circle when it's all over with. We're in good shape right now. Well, now, Derek Cope was down here. Also, his cousin, Ernie Cope, uh, Jackie Johnson, Derek's uh, former crew chief. There's a lot of talent down here right now. Yeah, well, actually, it's uh, funny. Like, the crew chief uh, that's working with us now, uh, this team all year, was with Derek. He was with Jimmy Enslow. He's been with uh, Jimmy Bound and myself, and he's won championships with every one of us. Uh, you know, we're just, we, we really feel we got some experience uh, on that end of it. Uh, it's a little different car than we're used to. The Winston West cars were a little heavier, uh, a little bit different, and uh, so we had to bring in Kelly to dial in the, the tour car for us, but uh, it's, it's working right, real good right now. I'd say it is, boy. If experience is the key, these guys have got it. A former Winston West champion, uh, a crew chief that worked for three different Winston West champions, and the, and the, the uh, current Northwest Tour champion, these guys have got some talent here. They brought us a revised schedule, just so everybody knows. Did you get that down there in the truck? Cup pole qualifying will be tomorrow morning now. Just so everybody knows, they'll, uh, they're going to close the garage. They're going to give the trucks a half hour of practice if there's time, which there probably won't be. And then the garage is open at 7, cup practice at 8.30, and pole qualifying at 10.45 for Winston Cup. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. <laughs> hey, Glenn. Hey, we, Glenn. Do we have a hotel update hey, yet? Hey, Glenn. I hear you. Tell me how McCowan got three laps down. Uh, they passed him on the racetrack three times? No, sir. No. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. I, 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 I've I have not seen this guy make any green flag stops or anything, and he was leading everybody ever since the race started. I well, mean, I don't understand it. I don't know. I, I, I haven't been able to, to uh, keep up with him. Obviously, somebody else had not either. <laughs> So we'll see how Gary Smith is able to do here in these last 42 miles. 144 laps are complete this afternoon. Buddy Scott Hansen's going to have the restart lead, it looks like, when we go green here in just a moment. Scott Hansen will get the lead when they drop the green, but one thing about him, he has not really shown the muscle that he normally does at this particular part of the race. So uh, we'll just have to see if he's as strong as, as he usually is in the last little bit. But I don't believe he's going to be able to handle Smith. Hands it up through the gears and away into turn one. Kevin Richards in the 35 and Jim Englebright in the 50. The top three as we watch the field get away. That's some wounded animals out there at the moment. Some cars with heavy damage on them. 
as we go green for what could be the final segment of the afternoon here today. Up onto the backstretch, leaders behind Scott Hansen down into turn three. Track conditions have changed quite a bit here because the sun is really starting to shine now. Look at Gary Smith on the outside there. Coming through this traffic, I'm telling you, that car is hooked now. It won't be very long before Scott Hansen will answer all our questions. I don't think he can handle him. It looks like right now Gary Smith is the class of the whole field right now. Smith wasted no time to pick off second spot. Engelbright there closing in on Richards. Engelbright in the green number 50 car. Running in fourth spot right now. Leaders up into turn three and four. Hanson's still out in front, but he's got about well, nine car lengths on Gary Smith, I would say, as they come up onto the main straightaway. He lost at least ten, ten car lengths on that one lap there. It won't be long before we'll have a race for the lead. You see Engelbright and those guys right now kind of struggling. You can see he's not able to really keep the speed up. Oh, my goodness. The four car Tom again. Tom Holbert was completely up in the gray there. You could see the dust fly. He was in trouble just for a second. Michael Alsop, meantime, runs fourth in the white number 61. There's Alsop going by. He's right behind Richards in the 35. Alsop's been strong. Remember, he was the Bush Poles qualifier here this weekend for the NASCAR Federalite Southwest Tour. He's led a good bit of the race, too. He dropped back on the last round of pit stops, but he's got a shot, certainly, with a little under 40 laps to go. Now up onto the back straightaway. Alsop takes a look to the inside of Richards as they battle for third. Now you see he's got the position. He'll be able to make the move on the inside going in this corner without much, much trouble at all. So the 61 of Alsop reclaims third spot right now. Your leader continues to be Hanson. Smith in the 79 directly in front of this shot you're seeing of Alsop. He is in second spot. These cars third, fourth, and fifth. Engelbright in the 50. Running in fifth spot. There's your leader Hanson out of two. And out of the back straightaway now. One good thing about the way Phoenix is laid out. You don't see sun down into three. You do see it down into turn one, though, at this stage of the afternoon. I was just fixing to say, Gary Smith really got a great start there, and he looked like he was running the leader down, but now he's kind of holding his own. If anything, also from third is closing in on him just a little bit. Michael Walsh has been very strong all afternoon. He scored a little under two seconds off the lead right now, but he pushes way high up there in two. One car in trouble. That's Ron Peterson in the eight. He's been down low and in the dirt a couple of times here today. Looks like motor problems now for the eight down through turns one and two. Ron Peterson from San Bernardino, California being shown in 15th spot but four laps down to the leaders. Peterson back on the gas though. Apparently not a terminal problem whatever the situation was. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well he almost had a terminal problem there Rick. He got up <laughs> at the high stuff going off a of four. Popped the wall pretty good. It bounced off across the uh, racetrack right in front of traffic but he held control of it continued on but uh, I got to feel like he did some damage to that race car he hit the wall pretty hard he He's hit it so hard that all four wheels left the ground that's hard isn't it buddy you, you better believe if you can lift it off the ground you look at Whoa. him coming through he's in the loose stuff whoa you're right Glenn yeah. we just watched the replay he really tagged that outside wall he's got a little camber problem on the right front corner it looked like too going by the last time that wheel is tipped out quite a bit as you see when you'll see the outside of the car where he belted the wall just a moment ago. 34 miles to go, and the race remains in the hands of Scott Hansen. Peterson goes to the inside to let Roudman go by. Also, Chris Trickle in the 70, but as we told you, the right front really cambered out quite a bit. Yeah, he didn't do that car any favors. Anytime you hit hard enough to lift the left side off the ground, you can bet the rear end <laughs> housing and every. You can see the right oh, front yeah. there actually trying to come off. I think he's got something broken there, too. You can see the wheel moving up and down uh, pretty pretty markedly on that last well, picture. Just a second ago, the wheel was leaning all the way in at the top. Now it's leaning all the way under, so he needs to get in really quick. We watched the eight of Ron Peterson. Remember, he has had problems several times this afternoon. Back on track, the battle for fourth. Kevin Richards in the 35. Jim Engelbright in the 50 is fifth. This is a battle for position. The two car there, Craig Rodman, he is not in the hunt. Remember, he missed several laps earlier. Rear end problems. Took him a while to fix the car and get it back into the race. So he missed a lot of green flag laps. But this is a good one. Battling for fourth spot. Richards in the 35. Engelbright in the 50. As the laps wind down today here at Phoenix, Rodman right behind him. Then the four, Tom Hubert is running six. Let's take a look back up front. Michael Alsop in the 61, running in third. Gary Smith in the red 79. He is second. Scott Hansen almost a straightaway in front. Hansen, buddy, seems to have gained some strength here in the late stages. That's the one thing you can never guess on Scott Hansen. If anybody's ever watched him run a race, you never know what he has until the very end. And, buddy, he has a good race car right now. He has lengthened his lead just a little bit over Smith. 
Smith is second. That's the red card. Diving into three there. Then you have third, fourth, and fifth right behind him. Michael Alsop is there. Englebright is there. The 79th car of Smith rides in second spot. Now Richards in the 35 trying to hold Englebright back as they race for fourth spot. In front of them is Michael Alsop, who is third in the white 61 machine there. Good battle for fourth spot. Boy, Englebright's giving it everything he can trying to get by right now. Just a second ago, he almost made contact with the 35 car there of uh, Kevin Richard. Good racing out of turn three and four right now. This has been a good battle for 50 or 60 laps. These cars have been in the same group for quite some time. Well, Englebright's clearly faster in the center part of the corner. You watch him go in right here. He gives that car a ride right into that point, but then he sweeps up the racetrack just a little bit and loses some of the drive off the corner. Now, we've talked about the dust and everything that's been going on here this afternoon. I would think the top groove would be pretty gritty at this point of the afternoon. There's no saying, don't go there. And that's <laughs> just, no, you don't want to get out in that outside groove. 30 miles to go at Phoenix. Scott Hansen is your leader. He's the defending winner of this race. We'll see if the strategy has come around to put him in position to win two straight at Phoenix. Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway. Rick Benjamin and Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton on pit road. Your leader is Scott Hansen, less than 30 miles to go. And Hansen working up on one of the lapped cars, the 85 machine there of Mac McGarry, who started shotgun on the field today. We check back on that battle for fourth spot right now. Boy, Scott Hansen really got held up there, and Smith closed in about three or four seconds on him there. He's down to about 15 car lengths to our leader, Scott Hansen just by that one lap car there. Shows you what a lap car can do in the outcome of the race. Well, let's see what he does to Smith as he comes off the corner here. You can see Englebright fighting really hard there for fourth place. Englebright looks like he may get around. Richards on the low side to pick up the spot. He's got lap traffic in front, too. The McGarry machine, the 85 car, right there. And Englebright completes the pass on Richards. Richards gives him a little tap up in turn two, <laughs> up onto the back stretch. Give Englebright fourth spot. You can see the hand gesture there. He was letting him know, yeah, I know Thanks. you didn't mean to run in my <laughs> <laughs> Was that what that was? Yeah, it was. Cars working out of three and four. Englebright in the green machine there. Car number 50. Up now into fourth position, having gotten by Richards. He's got Michael Alsop in front of him in the 61. Alsop is third. Second belongs to Smith and Hanson in the 53. Trying to hang on, and all of a sudden, Smith said, it's time to go. Well, what happened? He got hung up behind that slow traffic and really brought him back in here. And all of a sudden, Smith has the draft now. And believe you me, at this racetrack, you run 170 miles an hour down the straightaway. There's a good draft down the straightaway. You can see Smith now in right behind him, and he's closing in. Looks like Scott Hanson right now. He's going to be very lucky to hold Smith on. 25 miles to go at Phoenix this afternoon, and we're under caution. Yellow on the speedway. Caution again, be the fifth time, sixth time this afternoon, I believe. As the yellow waves once again. So this will give everybody an opportunity to reload for the final run. Looks like we've got a piece of uh, body material. Looks like the hood of a car here on the main straightaway right past the start-finish line. Sixth caution of the day. Comes out on lap 162 this afternoon. So everybody slows it down. The pit road area not yet open. We'll have to see if anybody will gamble and try to come in pretty late in the race to come in for tires. Oh, I tell you what. I don't second guess these pit crew uh, people, though. They're really smart at what they do, and if they come in, it's the right thing to do, believe me. Part of the 67 looks like there on the main straightaway, the car of Doyle Olson from Salem, Utah. As we watch Scott Hansen, your leader. Hansen's led for quite a bit of the late stages of this one. Well, he looked like he was pull, just pulling away, and he was uh, out in clean air. He really had a great race car. The minute he had to break his momentum a little bit for a lap car there and let Smith get behind him, all of a sudden it was uh, a two-car race, and when also gets up there, we're going to have a shootout right to the finish. Well, they'll certainly get to start close together. Now, remember, Glenn told us earlier that in the last 10 laps, the lap cars dropped to the back, we're not to that point yet, though, so we'll line up for the restart as they're running on the track. Let's go back to pit road. Glenn Jarrett. Kelly Tanner on car number 79. Has Gary got anything left for him? You got the brake you needed. He's closed up now. Has he got something for him, Kelly? I think Gary does. I think the Rabanco Chevrolet is going to be in victory lane here a little bit. I think Gary wants this race worse than Scott. Scott's a good racer, but I think you're going to see Gary Smith go to lead here in about five laps. 
All right, let's see what they got to say in Scott Hansen's pit, Randy. Well, Jimmy Schrader, you've got all your strategy down where you want it. You took on rights, then lefts, then rights again, and uh, you've got the lead. Can you hold them off? I think so. The only problem we got now is going into one. Scott can't see nothing. Our spotter's helping him. I think we're going to be all right. What about the car? How's it feel to him? It feels a lot better than it did before. We got it working now. Okay, that's the strategy from down here. They think they got it working. Buddy Baker, you're shaking your head. I don't know that you buy that. <laughs> I love what crew chiefs say. Did you hear the crew chief? M my guy's going to win. They asked the other guy, my guy's going to win. Let me tell you, they wouldn't be working on these cars if they didn't really believe that, too. Well, that sets up quite a battle, wouldn't you say, Glenn Jarrett? Oh, I think so, Rick. My, my comment about it is listening to, uh, to what Hanson's crew chief says. Somebody ain't telling the truth down here. <laughs> no, not in motorsports. Can that you can't imagine be. that? That's never happened before. No, I, I'm, first time I've ever run into that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's been a lot of firsts today. <laughs> Under caution, we're scoring. It'll be one to green. We're getting the signal from the flag stand right now. Scott Hanson in the 53 car. Be your restart leader once again. Go and there'll be 20 miles to go, buddy. When we go back under green, nobody deciding to come to pit road. They're going to go with what they've got. That's exactly right. Uh, they have to stay out there. Track position is too important to give it up right now. And uh, the big thing that I think, I think the first five cars right now that are in, on the lead lap certainly have a good chance. I think Engelbright may be the sleeper in the green car. He looks awful good in the corners now. And uh, of course, uh, Smith. Everybody. And including myself knows that that's a great car, but Scott Hampton not going to roll over and play dead. It should be a dandy here when we get ready to go in just a moment. Now, we said that no one had elected to come out of pit road, but one car did. Brian Germoni was running eighth, and he'd been up in the lead pack most of the afternoon, too. He decided to stop, pick up some tires. He's back on the racetrack. He gives up a lot of track position here with 20 miles to go, so we'll see if Germoni is able to come back up through. He is on the lead lap, so that will put him toward the track. If they come down for the green flag, I can tell you this. You want to get a good start with 20 to go. Let's watch and see. Elmo Langley brings the pace truck in. Scott Hansen leads him up through the gearbox, coming to the stripe. This will be 166 laps complete, 20 to go. We're back underway. Hansen leads him down into one. Smith about three car lengths back. That's the red car in second. He's diving low right away, buddy. He is diving low, and Hanson pushed out just a little bit in the center part of the corner. You can see Smith really closing in on him as they go down to turn three. Hanson still holds on, but Smith very, very strong in that 79 car. Looks to the low side coming out of four. Hanson likes it up in the middle of the racetrack. Hanson maintains the lead. Randy Pemberton, what are they saying down there? Well, just like Buddy Baker said, the draft does play a key role in this, and Scott Hanson said he wants to get away from that 79 if he can right off the bat, because when he gets underneath him, like he does coming off of turn two there just a moment ago, it loosens him up. So we'll see what he does going into turn three. Smith trying to reel in Hanson. Smith in the 79 is second. Hanson in the white 53 there is your leader. Also in the 61 is third right behind him. Now these two guys start racing side by side and that's going to bring the 61 of all up right up on them. So right now when they make a pass, if they do later on in the race, the thing they have to do is make that pass and make it stick. No change among the top three. Smith may be electing to sit tight for the next little bit, although Kelly Tanner told us a few moments ago, within five laps, he tried to get to the front. He run three under green so far, and he hasn't been able to do it out of four. And now look at this. Hansen opens up six car lengths. That's what I was telling you. He seems to have a great race car in clean air. There's nothing around him right now, and uh, Scott pulled out a great uh, lead just a little while ago. And uh, what he wants to do right now is build as much margin up because you can see Smith running down just before the caution not long ago. This a battle for sixth spot. The four of Tom Hubert who's been in several mix-ups today. And alongside him, Mark Reed, the 73, who's led a time here. Reed's been strong. Trying to get to the inside and pick up sixth, and Reed makes the pass. So give Reed sixth position. Hanson, meantime, maintains the lead. 170 complete, 16 to go now. We watch the lead group move through turns one and two. Jim Englebright in the green car there. He remains in fourth spot. The white car of Alsip, the 61 is third. There's Smith in the 79 second. Everybody chasing race leader Scott Hansen, who's trying to win. This would be his third in the last four years of these 300-kilometer fall events that close out 
the Southwest Tour season. Now here's Alsop to the inside on Gary Smith. So Michael Alsop, buddy, as you suggested, getting strong. He is awful strong down the front straightaway. He does have the angle on the 73 of Smith. As they go through the corner, you can see he gets a good drive up out of the corner. But to the outside there, it's normally a little quicker down the straightaway. He'll probably pull even down the back straightaway. Michael also giving Gary Smith everything he can handle as they battle for second. They're door to door up in three. Smith on the high side into four. Also down low. Looks like also may be able to complete the pass and take over second spot. This allows Hanson meantime to get even further out in front. They are still side by side. Well, that's really playing in Scott Hanson's uh, Decker cards right now. As you can see, the 61 of also is really trying to get by, but you're not going to just give them a spot this close to the end of the race. Michael Alsop in the white car on the inside going for second. He was the pole sitter here today, and he gets by Gary Smith. So that makes Gary Smith's chore a whole lot tougher with less than 14 miles to go now. Alsop is second, Smith is third. Everybody chasing the leader, Scott Hansen, down into one. Now what this did, them running side by side, this gives Scott Hansen about a 15 to 20 car length lead now. You can see right here as he goes by, it's all the way back to there. And just two laps of those guys running side by side, he opened up a tremendous lead. Hanson all alone now. He's got a lot of open racetrack in front. He's got a quarter of a track of open ground in front of him as the leaders move by one of the damaged cars from one of the earlier wrecks. There's 79. Gary Smith running third. Jim Engelbright in the 50 car is fourth. I'm not so sure that Engelbright doesn't have a shot at Smith here. Well, Engelbright is extremely good, as I said just a few minutes ago. Uh, you can see his car is good on long runs. He's not very good when the tires are cold, but as they get really hot, he really has a good handling race car. You can see him moving in on Smith there. He's able to uh, maintain a lot of corner time there. You can see him making the move on the inside on Smith, trying to get by him. You make it right in the 50 with a late race charge. You're bidding for third spot on Gary Smith. We were thinking that Gary Smith might be the guy to beat here in this last run to the checkered flag. Doesn't look like it's going to work out that way at all. Hanson is still your leader. Alsop is second. Smith is now one and a half seconds behind in third. Trying to hold off Jim Engelbright in the 50 car there, who's running in fourth spot. Only 10 laps to go this time by. Your leader, Hanson, is out of four. This is that battle for third spot. Again, Engelbright in the 50, the green car, Smith in the 79, the red car, and we have 10 to go. Group down into turn one. Remember that the two car of Craig Rodman is a lap car. The 73 of Reed running in fifth. And this is the lead battle right here. Hanson with about 10 car lengths over also I was just fixing to say also is really moving in. You can see there through turn three, picked up about five car lengths. I think also really dialed in here for the long run. Man, he is catching as I speak. He is really reeling in the leaders. You see Engelbright fighting for a third spot there. This is still that battle for third. Mark Reed in there as well in the red 73. As we watch the leaders move down the back stretch into turn three. Hansen in the 53 car is out in front. Also in the white 61 is second. He was the pole sitter. There's the third place car of Gary Smith. Jim Engelbright in the green 50 is fourth. And then Mark Reed in the red 73 running in fifth. That's a good battle for third there on turn four. Much change up front. Also, still about seven or eight car lengths back. This is the battle for third spot now. With eight miles remaining here at Phoenix this afternoon. You see Angle Bright, he'll fall back about five, six car lengths. We'll run right back up on Smith, but does not have the power to put him away yet. But he's really working well through the corner if he just gets one little shot there. But let me tell you, that 73 is coming on now. That's uh, Mark, Mark Reed. Reed. He's yeah. doing quite a job. Gets a good drive out of the fourth corner, and he'll make the pass on Engelbright. So Mark Reed moves to fourth spot in the 73 to see if he's got anything for Gary Smith as they race out of two now. Well, what Reed will try to do is go on the inside of Smith, and if Engelbright will get right on his back end, when they start by, he can make that pass on Smith, but I don't think he has anything at all for Mark. Reed down low. He's about the only driver of this group of three able to work that low side up in three and four as they move down the main straightaway. Mark Reed's going to make it by. So Mark Reed will pick up third spot now. Gary Smith pushes high in turn two there. Engelbright closes right back in on him, but there's a change for third spot. Mark Reed takes over the position in that 73 car. He's from Bakersfield. And he's done a nice job here this afternoon. He hasn't got it yet. They're still fighting side <laughs> by side as they go into turn three there. 
I tell you what, Smith is not just giving up on this spot at all. He's fighting back on the outside. Just tremendous shot down the front straightaway there. Pulls even as he heads in turn one. Drivers getting the five to go signal from the flag stand here, and it's still Scott Hansen and Michael also up front, a little bit ahead of this group of cars. Smith on the outside. Reed got a little crossed up there in two, so Smith moves back by to reclaim third spot. Well, I tell you what, all you have to do is get a little sideways. Like that, check up just for one. You can see he lost almost four car lengths there just by checking up that little brief moment. 182 miles of 186 complete. This is the battle again for third spot. Reed tries it again on the low side. He and Smith have been just hammer and tongs here the last 10 laps. Reed down low. Looks like he may get it this time, buddy. Don't say that. <laughs> Still have a, lot of, a lot of straightaway going back. Reed really pulled over just a little bit to really take care of that spot. This year. Smith, I don't think, has the power to come back on him. They'll come up to three laps to go this time by. This the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Craig Rodman and the Deuce watching this. Remember, Rodman is several laps down. Lost a lot of time on pit road earlier this afternoon. Scott Hansen with a half second lead as we check in on the top two cars down the back straightaway. They'll get two to go this time. And here's Engelbright in the 50 now moving by Smith. This is a race for fourth spot into turn three. This looks like a good three lap race if I know anything about racing. You, you see Engelbright there really getting on the inside, but Smith fighting back. They'll go down the front straightaway. He'll pull back even as we saw just a while ago. Smith fighting everybody there. And that's what race car drivers are out there for. Put up the best fight they possibly can. Two laps to go. The signal from the flag stand. This is now the battle for fourth spot. Smith trying to hang on over Inglebright in the 50. Gary Smith in the red 79. Inglebright in the green 50 car down into turn three. White flag will wave for Scott Hansen this time by. Also is about five car lengths back, but I don't think he's going to have enough. Scott Hansen is going to have played his cards perfectly this afternoon, it looks like, Buddy Baker. Scott Hansen running a very, very good line through the corner. You see him coming off the back end of the car is very straight. Also doing everything he can, but I don't know that I would even want to chase that guy, and I'm sure right now that also would go. If he just slipped one time, but uh, i got to tell you, that don't happen much with that 53 car. Scott Hansen comes out of turn four. He'll come to the line and in his third 300 kilometer event here at Phoenix in the last couple of years. Here's the battle for fourth spot, and it'll be the 79 car. It'll be Gary Smith taking fourth spot behind Reed Alsop and your winner, Scott Hansen. Well, now we know who was telling the truth after that last round of pit stop. <laughs> well, Hansen really drove a great race there, and he did what he had to do to win. And that's all the race car driver is supposed to do take a good car, manage it well. Balance it well. Tell the guys what to do. Good crew, good driver, and anywhere you see this 53 show up, you can just about bet that he's going to be in the top five. Scott Hansen wins his second consecutive 300-kilometer event for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour here at Phoenix in the fall. His third and four tries played his pit stop strategy perfectly. Michael also did a great job as well. The pole sitter comes back to finish second today. So Scott Hansen's the winner at Phoenix this afternoon. We'll come back and talk to the winner in victory lane right after this. And it didn't go how I was thinking it was going to finish at all. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> anytime Scott Hansen's in the race, these boys will tell you. I mean, he's, oh, just, yeah. he's just as steady as a clock. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who's Scott? Is that my jacket over there wadded up? I don't know. I bet it is. <laughs> yep, it is, and i got to wear it tonight. <clears throat> we'll send it out and get it pressed for you. Uh the only time, uh, Gary, and it wasn't anything. It, it was just that I was talking about the lead, and somehow we got back shake in there. Shake it, shake Oh. <laughs> oh, thanks. You what? Oh, they do. Okay. Then we, we better... Watch how long we talk, then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gary. Gary? Uh, listen, uh, like Sunday, if you're going to go back like that, just tell me when you're going to go back, and I'll, and I'll shut up. Okay. Well, I don't want to be talking. No, right. 
Right. I don't want to be talking about something that's not on the screen, though. Okay. Okay, then. He We are back at Phoenix International Raceway, the Featherlight Southwest Tour of NASCAR, 300 kilometers in the books. Second time in a row, Scott Hansen's come to victory lane. Glenn Jerry. And Scott Hansen climbs out of his car victorious, like you said, Rick, third time in four years. Wakes to the crowd here. Well, in the, uh, how many annual running of the Scott Hansen benefit? <laughs> Boy, you just have a knack for winning at this place. This one here goes to Dick Trickle. We rode in this morning era. I was late getting in here and he says, remember, right side tires, left side tires, and right side tires, and that's what we did. And track position was there, and I'll tell you, Family Channel, come on board. Come on, Cox Communication, great deal. Scott, you had some of those young guys, though, that didn't make, they didn't make it easy on you. They pushed you pretty hard all the way. I'll tell you, I knew that 61 car was tough. I had to get out of the way of that 79. He was leaking some oil, and he was really getting me loose. So, you know, I just had to just go out there and ride, you know, and run like I always do here. And, Pit crew, uh, just a heck of a job. Got me right back up where I needed to be, and then it was up to me. Well, it was up to him, and it was up to the right man. He certainly does well here at Phoenix. So Scott Hansen is the winner this afternoon, maybe the bigger winner of this one, uh, one of the Roudman brothers, Chris Roudman. We'll talk to him in a moment. Here's the way the top ten stacks up. Hansen, your winner, Michael Alsop. And Mark Reed with a great run today to third spot after coming back. He restarted deep in the pack a couple of times today. Gary Smith, and we take a look at the second 10. Doug McCown, who ran very strongly, lost a couple of laps early, but comes back and finishes 11th today. Chris Rodman in the 93, comes home 20th. He missed a bunch of laps, too, with some rear-end problems down there, but he wins the season championship. And we check out in 29th spot, Bob Lyon, who was very tough today, got caught up in a couple of wrecks, lost all the bodywork off the car up in turn three midway through the event. We take a look at the rest of the order of finish here today. The NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. 300 kilometers this afternoon. Scott Hansen wins his third in four tries here at Phoenix International Raceway. Let's meet the champion of this series for 1996. Here's Randy Pemberton. Well, Chris Rodman has climbed from his car. You guys really showed what this team is made of today. You had a great run early on and then had some problems. Team fought back hard and uh, you're standing here with the championship. Yeah, we had some problems with the car today. We ran real fast up front. You know, I guess we had a rear end cover come off. Something stupid kept us from winning this thing today. I'm not even sure who won this, who won the race today. But, you know, after that happened, we went down about 15 laps. So I just figured we'd run around out there and just take it easy, try to stay out of trouble, and just finish the race so we could drive this car into victory lane today to celebrate our championship win. Quickly, can you sum it up what this means to you to win the rookie of the year in the championship in the same year, young man, as you are? Oh, I think it's... I don't know how you'd sum something up like that. It's, it's a dream come true. Um, I couldn't have done it without my, my sponsors like West Coast Golf, Three Rivers Trucking, Dupre Investments, Page One Racing, and World Wide Maps. We wouldn't be able to do what we did this year without all the support and help from them. Okay, 1996 Featherlight Southwest Tour Champion. Rick. That is a storybook season indeed. Our congratulations to Chris Roudman, who turned in a great run all season long. Had some problems mechanically today, but certainly drove like a champion to come home the winner. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage today of the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour. Scott Hansen, your winner today. A lot of great drives and wild action. For Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, and Randy Pemberton, I'm Rick Benjamin. Our congratulations to race winner Scott Hansen and series champion Chris Rodman. We'll see you next time.